I have vastly more respect for the people who do this professionally. Oh, yeah. For you and the other people who did this as a full-time job, like the psychological, a deeper, I guess I, I didn't think, I did never think it's easy money. Right. I was never under that illusion, but a deeper respect for the psychological pressures behind it and a recognition that, nah, this ain't me. No. The following is a conversation between myself and Backflippius. Backflippius has always been great to me, even with all the drama and controversy that surrounded me. I like him. All my friends like him. He's just a great guy. And he manages to do this while also still being honest and straightforward with his views, his opinions, his words. He doesn't, he doesn't sugarcoat stuff, which I think is a very valuable quality. So here's the conversation. Backflippius. Uh, What's up for us? Nice to finally talk to you. I think this is our yep, yep. our first actual conversation. Um, aside from just passing things and uh, shit posting on Twitter, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I have. I'm trying to think. I've known you for a while. First of all, thanks for doing this. I know you're waking up, or not waking up. You're staying up late. I'm waking up. You're staying up late, and you took a five hour energy. Um, <laughs> and I know scheduling things with me is always tough, so I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> so I was going to ask you a few questions first to start off. Um, cool, cool. Cool. So how long have you been streaming? Um, When was it? It was May of 2019? Oh, really? 2018? Three years. Thank you. Yeah. Wait, May of 2019? When... When was the Sekiro? When did Sekiro come out? Oh, I started um, streaming a month before Sekiro came out. Did you start streaming because of Sekiro? No. No. Oh, actually, just uh, a that's just how the timing worked out. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, but it ended up helping me because when all this, I was still playing DS One when all the Souls boys jumped to Sekiro. Right. Okay. So that kind of helped with initial, um, like, you you know, like going from uh, one viewer to ten viewers is the biggest jump. It's a yeah, it's a pretty tough thing to do, especially and, in, um, in today's I, day, day and age. And I credit the biggest thing I credit that to is I was streaming Dark Souls One when Sekiro came out. Okay, so you started with Dark Souls One. Yep. And that's what you were doing for a month before Sekiro came out? That's what I was doing for fi my first five months of streaming. Five months of streaming. So, Oh, wait, wait. wait. So you, you started with Dark Souls 1 and you didn't stream Sekiro when it came out. You stayed with Dark Souls 1? No. I have never streamed Sekiro. Oh, what? I love the game. I love the game, but not as a challenge run game. I, I liked playing it, but for challenge running, I've always wanted to do something unique. Okay. Like, I always want to do something that either hasn't been done by anyone, hasn't been done in this way by anyone, or at least hasn't been done by many people. Mm -hmm. So, no, um, I started streaming Dark Souls 1. It wasn't intentional to start streaming before Sekiro. It was actually um, a combination. So, okay, how I got started streaming was late one night, mm -hmm. um... I was up and just feeling like um, chilling somewhere. So I found, um, I just searched blood, the Bloodborne category and found uh, Mr. K Witty 23. Ah, K Witty. And he's a super chill guy. And he was playing Bloodborne and practicing for some no hit um, tournament. Mm -hmm. And this was McRaptor's very first um, Bloodborne no hit tournament. Right. That yeah. he was practicing for. Yep. And so I hung out there, um, watched him, you know, watched him, enjoyed my time there, then um, ended up um, catching McRaptor event, mm -hmm. and from there found a lot of others, and then got sucked in until I'm like, you know what? Nobody is doing sor um, sorcery only, no hidden DS1. Right. Um, I mean, Couch, you know, Couch was really the only person doing magic runs at the time, and he was pretty much exclusively DS3. Right. Um, McDrunkard, I believe, had just gotten or was about to get. No, no, he got it the day before Sekiro launched. Um, sorcery only in DS2, but nobody. And Xeno, some had done sorcery any percent in DS1. Mm -hmm. But I saw a run that nobody else had done. All bosses, DS1, sorcery only hitless. I saw a hitless run nobody had done. And 
honestly, that seemed pretty easy, pretty doable. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, Dark Souls 1 is one of my favorite games of all time. Mm hmm. And I love that game to death. I'm obsessed with it. Um, so you you played it. So you DS1 played knowledge. it far before uh, you started streaming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you were just hanging out oh, playing yeah. Dark Souls One by yourself mostly, and then you're oh, like, yeah. oh, I want to well, stream it. Um, I got a lot into PvP um, when it first came out too, and uh, okay, um, haven't touched it recently. But um, you know, when it first came out in the first year of the game, I was pretty heavy into the PvP as well. What was it but, about the um, PvP that you liked so much? Because usually, I usually, mean, um, uh, it's a challenge runner will either go one way or the other. They are they're either generally PvE or PvP. Like Gino, well, Gino's mm -hmm. actually the exception. He does both. Well, but. G no, G <laughs> But, um, I mean, it was, I mean, I loved the game in general, and at the time, like, as far as, like, a 3D, um, you know, action fighting game that you could actually play competitively, there wasn't much in the space mm -hmm. that was good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, you know, Dark Souls 1, I mean, Demon Souls obviously first, but, mm -hmm. um, it, who owned a PS3? Oh, you didn't have a PS3? So you never played Demon's Souls? Oh, no. So you started no. with Dark Souls. Dark um, Souls was your first Souls. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I loved the hell out of that game. And I mean, yeah, I loved every aspect of it. And so, um, and I've always, like, even as a young kid, done challenge runs, just kind of made up my own challenges and tried to, you know, beat the game without leveling, beat the game without this or that. Well, let's, and well, so challenge let's running was nothing new. Talk about that. Which which games were you playing right. before Dark Souls 1? I mean, tons of stuff. Um, Life before Dark Souls 1, I mean, all the way back to when I was two years old playing Space Invaders on the Atari 2600. And, you know, what the hell does a two-year-old have to do with his time? Okay. <laughs> they just stick me in front of that console yeah. with the little joystick, and um, I would go for hours straight just... And, it, and my brother and my parents would look at the screen, and things were at the high levels moving just unbelievably fast, and they're uh -huh. like, how is this kid doing this? So you've always... But you've I too. I didn't have any time. That's, well, I didn't that's have impressive anything else to spend my time two. on. That's, that's pretty impressive at two. I don't think I was... <laughs> I don't think I was doing anything good in games at two years old. Uh, actually, I remember I, my dad would probably... Yeah, I remember watching my dad play when I was that young, probably even a little bit older. So you've always been good at games, basically. You, you, you grew up a gamer. Um, in a way, yes. I consider myself um, average or so at like the mechanical aspects. I consider myself a good strategist. A good strategist. And... <laughs> Okay. That, that's where I, why, what I look at with hitless runs is um, figuring out, like, routing and figuring out strats and efficient routes yep. is actually what I love. Yeah. Actually doing the runs, eh, can take that or leave that. I think I've heard you say that before. And so in that respect, you're a lot like Couch Jockey because Couch Jockey is a router oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So then let's say, okay, so you start with Atari, obviously. Did you have a Super Nintendo, an N64, a PlayStation, anything? Oh yeah, um, Atari, the um, Nintendo. Mm -hmm. um, it, before speed running was really a thing, my friends and I would race um, to see who could get the best times in um, Super Mario Brothers. Oh, okay, like the first one, the second one, the third one, Super Mario World. Uh, first one. First, the first one. one. Oh, the very and first one. I mean, our time, our we didn't have strat um, insane strategies. We didn't know glitches. Yeah, you know, I think our times were like seven or eight minutes. But yeah, yeah you know, we sure. didn't know glitches. We didn't have you know a community to strat with. It was just us um, racing against each other to see who could get from beginning of the game to the end of the game the quickest. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I remember that. I remember the days before the internet and how. Uh, well, it's it's. It's interesting how 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 far things have come, but I I remember playing games like Smash uh, with friends and thinking I was like the best in the world. Um, when the oh, yeah. yeah the reality was <laughs> like no you, you I couldn't I wouldn't be able to do anything when when information wasn't as connected and when mm -hmm. well I guess it wasn't as ubiquitous and the strats weren't as developed and you were relying on things like. Uh, uh like game informers and and uh hardcover guides oh and stuff like that yeah, yeah, yeah. that was a different world huh 
Oh yeah, and well, I mean, we were the best way to describe it is we were all in smaller ponds. Mm -hmm. Like with the internet and the interconnectivity, we've all been thrown into the same fishbowl all together into one big giant fishbowl, whereas before it was just your friends groups and who you knew. Mm -hmm. And you were just all in our little ponds. Yeah, I remember Game Shark. Do you remember Game Shark? <laughs> Things like, oh, geez, oh, there, there was so <laughs> much out there that was that. Well, it wasn't really killed by the Internet, but the Internet just kind of made it a little bit more obsolete. obsolete. Yeah, a little bit more obsolete. But, it, you know, it, there's a there's an interesting thing with that, because I think although although the Internet has has added a lot of like, oh, like, look how much we know, look how much we can connect and stuff like that. There was something to getting stuck on a game for me and not like there's just no resource. You, if you're stuck, you're stuck. You're not going to figure it out. If your friend knows, then cool. But otherwise, like, I remember I played this game, Brave, Brave Fencer Musashi. Um, was uh, Oh, my God. My friends and I loved that game. Do you play that game? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, the way the you could just like pass out anywhere, you just stretch your arms uh -huh. and like, fall backwards and go to sleep. Yeah. My friends and I used to always call just like falling asleep in random places or falling asleep in class, um, musashing Mus <laughs> or, or pulling a musashi. That's pretty funny, actually. That's actually <laughs> super funny. But yeah, that 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 was that was a sick game. But when I was I was young, I remember. So there's action figures in that game. So the collectibles were action figures. If you if you like got all chests, mm -hmm. you got an action figure. If you beat the game, you got an action or you were you were able to buy an action figure. So like the yeah, yeah. the they were basically if you think about it, they were like trophies or achievements. Like, oh yeah, like mm -hmm. you have this action figure. And I remember there was a few, like there was um the Minku one or the Mama Minku, where you had to get all of the minkus and then you had to beat up the mama minku or uh well there's there's a few of them but i was like i have no idea how to get this you know and back then games had missable things so it's not just like mm -hmm. you could play the game get to the end and then go back and collect everything it's like if you missed it you missed it it's like oh too bad you know yeah, you um, progress the story past a certain point, you can't go back and get it. Yes, missables were, were far more common. Um, so actually getting these things or finding these achievements, was it was a really big deal. Like, it wasn't just like, oh yeah, I followed a guide or... Oh, the hoof, man. I followed a guide or anything like that. It was just like, oh yeah, yeah no, no, I got this done. And there was a magic to that kind of... Where it's like uh, you felt like you were one of the only people who did it, you know, and you probably weren't, but mm -hmm. it wasn't just like, oh, I looked it up and I figured it out. It was like, no, I, I figured it out. Oh fuck, how did I? I remember actually, I don't remember how I got one of these. I think back then, when chapters, when I would go to chapters for whatever reason, there were game magazines, and I think there was a section. I still, I actually still might have it. I kept all all of all of my old stuff. I still might actually have it, but there's a section that just a, a side page that listed the location of all the minkus in the game. And I remember using that and I, I felt so lucky that I found this one random book, like in the real world that told me where to get those things, because otherwise I would have never done it. <laughs> um, but there are things like that. And so you found a collectible in real life yeah, that yeah, allowed yeah. you to find collectibles in the game. Exactly. Yeah. I was, it's so exciting. It was <laughs> there's like a there's an exhilaration or an adventure there or something. But you're never gonna get that now. Now everything you just have information for everything. Like if you just get well, you can choose to deprive yourself of that, but I guess the um it doesn't feel the same. Nah. Yeah. And it's like I don't know because um, like you're you're right. You can choose yourself to deprive yourself of that but then you're so connected to everybody else and especially if you're mm -hmm. on twitch everybody plays games now like everybody knows what's, oh the back seating yeah it's like it's like it was the opposite yep. of back seating that's what it was like and now it's like we're in the we're in the era <laughs> of everything back seating you um trailers remember i remember how i would buy a game is i would look at the cover i look at the cover and read the back <laughs> yeah there was what no, was that no game? trailers um, there was a nintendo game called karnov um uh, a kind of crappy game but um this game sold so many copies because it had a tyrannosaurus rex on the cover that was it it had a shirtless russian man who spit fireballs and you know and it on the cover it showed him and a bunch of um things that he fought and one of the big things that was prominent on the cover was a tyrannosaurus rex was a tyrannosaurus and rex 
Rex. My friend bought it for that reason, and so and I guarantee you this game got so many sales because of that. What well, was it? Any T Rex on the cover. The kids will love it. Was it any good? Um, I mean, it wasn't complete crap. It was <laughs> okay. a bit behind the curve for the time it came out. I would say. Right. But I mean, it was all right. It wasn't like complete shovelware or anything. It, it, it had some fun to curve. it. It was a basic platformer where you played as a um, shirtless Russian man who spit fireballs and uh, you and jumped fought, around fought, and fought dudes. Were there T-Rexes in the game or no? The, there was a T-Rex was, was the boss to like the second to last level or something. Yeah. Okay. At least there's a T-Rex. No, the T-Rex was in the game. It was honest. Mm hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. That stuff, I don't know if you remember. Um, there were so many games that I bought uh, based on the cover, and I lucked out. And there were so many games that I bought that were like, oh, oh, man, I'm just realizing this now. I remember I never beat Jurassic Park. Uh, I think it was on the... Oh, uh, which one? I can't remember. I just remember like what the gameplay was, was like. Was it the top-down one on the yes. Super NES? Or yeah. was it... Okay. Yeah, top-down one, exactly. That game was kind of tedious crap. It was. It was. That game was <laughs> kind of tedious crap. The better one was for the Sega Genesis, because the Sega Genesis was like a side-scroller. Okay. And you could play either as Dr. Grant trying to escape the park, or you could play as a um, Velociraptor trying to hunt down no way. Dr. Grant. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Way back then, too, huh? One of the game modes was playing as a Velociraptor, and you were obsessed with eating Dr. Grant. Oh, and wow. And you were going to fight your way through hordes of you know park guards and other dinosaurs just to get that sweet sweet paleontologist um uh, meat well that seems way ahead of his time way ahead of his time <laughs> uh, and i remember playing um what was it super mario rpg uh, oh man without a guide and stuff oh that game was great mm -hmm. there's so much you just there is so much discovery in games before the internet. Oh, yeah. There's just so much really, really, really cool senses of like, oh, look what I found. Um, like, what was it in that game? The lazy shell. I remember finding the lazy shell or someone <laughs> told me about the lazy shell. You know, it's like, how on earth would you ever find that? It's, it's like a little bit like, huh? But at the same time, it's really, really, really cool because it's like, I don't know. I just can't, I can't describe it. Um, I don't remember where that was or how I found it, but I just remember if you equip it to Bowser, he has ultimate defense and won't take will take like one damage from everything, but also um, yep. his attack sucks and he won't deal anything, so he just becomes a pure tank. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't remember if that. If I'm remembering correctly, which... Um, yeah, you had the you armor know, and then you had the thing you kick. Well, no, it was the same thing. Shells could either be equipped by Bowser or used as a weapon by Mario. Oh, oh shit. I don't, I didn't remember that at all. Huh? No, that's cool. I re remember it was in the, it was in the town where everybody's getting arrowed. Uh, Gino's town. And then it's like a, it's like a, a vine, like one of those green vines that leads up into mm -hmm. the clouds and there's a la lazy shell there. Yeah. But no, I, I just can't get over that. It's like back then games were like an actual real adventure, you know? And there's something about just having everything available to you. Like right now, when I play Elden Ring, I don't really think of exploring mm -hmm. too much. I think of challenge running, you know, or, or mm -hmm. a new RPG that comes out. I know that eventually if the game is good, I will go for 100% completion. And I also know that I will most likely use a guide to do it because it's going to take a lot of hours and I don't have that time. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, so one thing with Elden Ring is I guess I had a luxury um, of not being a full-time streamer, so I kind of just disconnected from the internet almost entirely during that week. Mm -hmm. Well, disconnected entirely socially from the internet for like a week and played that game like it was my full time job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and so I had a lot of fun and a lot of discovery because I purposefully put myself in my own little fishbowl and, and had that joy of discovery. Right. But then after a while, I missed the, um, you know, talking with other people about the game and, you know, sharing things and uh, talking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. what we found and so on and so forth. So. I reconnected myself to the larger um, 
pond. Okay, well, well, why don't but, we go I mean, back to... That, that's a luxury I have as, you know, just somebody who does this as a hobby, whereas at the time you were a full, you were still a full-time streamer. That was your sole income, right? Yeah, for Elden or... Ring. Uh, I believe... Well, it was like I was falling off. So I, it was starting to be mm -hmm. like, uh, like, okay, Elden Ring's going to come out. Let's see what we can do with it. Do we want to do something with it? it so was... that makes it even worse because you're under pressure to, you know, perform. That's what there. it was with, with pretty much every game. Yeah, 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 yeah. It changed. It, Twitch, Twitch for me changed the way... Um... Wow, that sucks. I, I played games in general. Um... Because I, I did also like challenge running things when I was a kid. Like I played, I tried to play Mega Man X and Mega Man X2 as fast as I could uh, by myself. I didn't have any friends to compete with. No one else played video games. Uh, but things like that, uh, or I tried to do it perfectly. And my definition of perfect was like, I was able to capitalize on every single situation that came up. So let's say there was a boss, uh, he attacked me, I'd be able to dodge and hit him and waste no time in between. So it wasn't like hit list it, and it wasn't a speed run, but it mm -hmm. was kind of a combination. I just liked doing stuff like that. I, I just saw it as as more, uh, more, more mastery of the game. But you know, that, that's yeah. all, yeah, that's, that's all, that's all uh, different. Uh, maybe that's why I'm attracted to hit list runs and speed runs. But with Elden Ring, when it came out, it was like, uh, it was like, yeah, it was like the end of my streaming thing. Cause I mm -hmm. I had done no hit for a long time and I had no hit so many things. I know it I know it DS3, I know it all the Souls games up to that point. And then I had done a few yeah. other runs too, like um Breath of the Wild. Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight. Oh, that was a that was a tough one. Pantheon five, that was a very tough mm -hmm. one. Yeah, that was a tough run for sure. But there's like a interesting thing. It's like at a, at some point what you're doing is done. Like, that's what it kind of feels like, you know, for, mm -hmm. for, for me, I did Muay Thai for many, many years. And after a while, it's like, okay, I'm done. You know, like I, I'm good. I made it this far. Um, you know, if I wanted to make it farther or if I wanted to do more, that's, that's another thing, but it's time to move forward. It's like a, a chapter in a book. You read a chapter, that chapter is yeah. done. You don't need to go back. Yeah. Um, I was kind of feeling that way about challenge running and uh, Twitch. It's like, okay, look, I did this. I proved that I was, I was pretty good at whatever game I was playing, and I put a lot of effort in, and you know, I made good content in this area for a while. And then when Elden Ring came around, it's like, you know, it's 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 time, it's time, you know, it's time to move forward a little bit. So I was already yeah. kind of on, on the way out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that kind of resonates with me a lot recently so um yeah like i haven't i've i streamed like twice a couple weeks ago but before that i hadn't streamed for two months mm -hmm. and i'm realizing that the reason why is well partially the time of the year this time of year is beautiful for getting outside mm -hmm. but we're just coming up at the end at the um high days of summer where things get unbearably hot and muggy in michigan so I i'm getting back online now and getting more indoors and staying away from the unbearable humidity and uh, mosquito hordes that are oh, out that there mosquitoes suck do you do you prefer cold or heat um dr either cold or dry heat dry heat not moist but, heat huh? but humid heat is awful like, yeah i will take 110 degrees in the desert as long as i've got you know sufficient water of course but i'll take 110 degrees of dry heat over 85 degrees of um humid heat what is that that's like 35 it celsius feels right like you're drowning in air Third, something like that something um, like that yeah some so 33 35 <laughs> like a thailand Sorry. yeah no i i can't remember Ah, uh, humid but, um, heat. What you were saying about like feeling it's the end of a chapter, I'm kind of at that right now because so I've never went into streaming to like be big and famous and you know make tons of money. That has never been a goal and has actually been in some ways the opposite of what I desire. I went into streaming with some very specific goals in mind for myself for personal development. Okay. Yeah. And recently, a couple months ago, I achieved the last one. Oh, do you want to talk to me about those? So why don't we start with uh, yeah. why you started streaming in the first place? Um, well, I mean, partly it's um, bad influences. Uh, K. Witty, <laughs> um, McRaptor, and Colmer. Ah, uh, Colmer, um, yeah. 
and especially Colmer, um, really got me into it and got me into the idea of it. Okay. And like I said, I saw a world's first hit list run, a run nobody had done, and I had unique ideas and strats for. I had something unique to share with this community that um, I had grown fond of. Did you already watch Twitch also, before uh, you found Souls on Twitch? Yes. What, what were you watching on Twitch? Yes, and um, Age of Empires 2. Okay, so... I actually got brought to Twitch by um, a streamer, uh, T90, um, who did casting for Age of Empires 2, which is a turn, which not turn-based, a real-time yeah, uh, strategy game. Yeah, that came out 20 years ago. Well, actually, 23 years ago now. Are you petting a dog by chance right now? It's actually more popular than it's ever been. It popped off in the past five years, and there's now, like, tournaments with $100,000 prize pools. Okay, so why is that? Because, like, I... So I, I grew up it's... with StarCraft too, and I remember Age of Empires, but it wasn't popular mm -hmm. back then. Why Why did it up uptick well, in popularity now? it's always had an undercurrent of popularity. When it first came out, I mean, it wasn't as big as StarCraft, but it's always had a decent amount of popularity, and it's had some enduring qualities. And I think with the growth of YouTube and, um, like, it just kind of, I think part of it, it got picked up by the algorithm with YouTube. Mm -hmm. Part of it is it's a really, at its core, it's a really good game. Like, it's just, you hear stories about its development. The developers put so much effort and so much soul into mm -hmm. it, and it's flawed. It's a flawed masterpiece, just like Dark Souls, but it's a really solid and interesting game at its core. Okay, so and, uh, did you play StarCraft or StarCraft 2 at all? Um, a little bit. Never got into those. Was into Warcraft um, 2 Warcraft, and 3 for right. a little bit, but um, no. Age of Empires 2 has always been my RTS, um, the, the RTS love the, of my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, the reason I'm I mean, asking... It was just like one... Okay. Um, is because I have reference point for StarCraft, so I'm trying to figure out... Uh, how they compare. I have a little bit of reference point in terms of Warcraft okay, 3. I, I can tell you how they compare. Yes. Um, so, um, it, StarCraft is very, like, hard balanced. Like, the, the maps are set. Mm -hmm. The maps are set in stone, especially the competitive maps. And e there's three factions that are meticulously well balanced. Mm -hmm. Age of Empires 2... The maps are random. There's, they're not completely random. Like there's elements, like you'll play a map that like one, probably the most popular map for competitive play is called Arabia. Okay. It's like an open desert. Players start um, a decent distance away from each other. There's decent number of tree clumps and some train features, but it's mostly an open map. Like there's some things you can count on. You can always count on a um, clump of berry bushes um, near your um, town center where you start. Mm -hmm. You can always count on, you know, a certain number of resources within a certain space of where you start. It's balanced like that, but like what specific terrain features are, where the wood, where the forest lines are and everything else mm -hmm. is random. And you have to explore the map and discover it and play around that randomness. Okay. And so and what, what you're doing is you're, goes into the factions. you're gathering resources. Sorry, so berry bushes are your food, I'm going to guess. And. Um, you're gathering resources for your town and then you have a competitor somewhere else on the map like they're not preset mm -hmm. positions and then you are well, it's basically you're trying to amass your empire so that you can you can crush theirs yes yeah yes yeah but the same you know same basic things where you're building up your um base and you know training soldiers and researching techs mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. sending them off but instead of there being three meticulously well-balanced factions that have nothing in com that have little in common with each other mm -hmm. you have um like 30 civilizations which have Oof. largely the same units but like this but like certain civ bonuses like um it, the um it, uh, the Celts have um faster moving infantry and faster firing siege weapons. Mm -hmm. Just small little buffs. Um, yeah, but like small things end up making a big difference. Right. Um, and then like you know certain factions won't have um access to thir certain things. Um, it, the Vikings have really strong infantry and um archers, but um almost no cavalry. The Mesoamerican civs have no cavalry at all. Mm -hmm. But um Yeah, okay, so then what what is uh, what is your favorite race or favorite, I guess, faction, and what would you also consider the best faction in that game? 
Um, what's the best? Um, I don't know. I haven't kept up um with it recently. Like last time I played was about six months ago or so. Fair enough. And yeah. the best always like keeps shifting. Oh, I mean, it does. It, okay, that's one good. One of the newer ones, the polls, um, have proved have always have since they got released been pretty strong huns are always near the top oh the huns my favorite was um my favorite was always the goths the, the goths? goths are ridiculous <laughs> what the, goths? the goths are ridiculous they have no they don't have stone they are the only sith that doesn't have stone walls they uh, okay they only have wooden walls yeah. they have crap defenses they have soup but what the one thing they have is super cheap infantry oh so your whole game plan is you need to hold out until the final age until the imperial age until then your your sole mission is survive right if your opponent if if your opponent does not crush you if you can reach the imperial age at even somewhat something resembling equal footing yeah you can turn on the fire hose and just spam out ridiculously um, high numbers of cheap infantry and just send them to die. Okay, so they're, they're like Zerg, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so you just you just mass up, mass up, and then you just overwhelm. Um, well, that's one strategy, of course. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so does that game still get balance patches, or is it just... It oh, is yeah, what it no. is. Oh, it does. Um, that's so there's the other still support. It's, um, it, like, I mean, the initial wave, but it's always had some level of support, but um, because the community has always been somewhat there, but as mm -hmm. it's taken off more, um, it's getting regular updates and not just patches, full on DLC. Full. Oh, great. Wow. Look at that. Yeah, cool. So this game is an active development. And the funny thing is, it's... Um, it, like age of empires 4 got released last year hmm. and age of empires 2 is still more popular really is that yeah. like a that's like a so i never played diablo but i heard that was kind of like how diablo worked a little bit uh diablo 2 oh, is yeah, very diablo very 2 popular is, um, is still the more popular one yeah um and then they remade but, diablo but yeah, 2 right I mean, it's um yeah they just um i think last year re released that um uh, remake and um it's getting updates and uh, new patches and new content and such did that take off at all or was it another was it a i think so okay that's good it's not something it's not like you know crazy um world shatteringly popular but i'm pretty sure there's um a pretty decent sized community and at least a few large streamers um they didn't do a bad job no, they they didn't um, do what they did with Warcraft 3 Reforged, where they completely screwed it and made a legitimately inferior version of the product. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> that was a disaster. Okay, okay, so okay, so you you start with Age of Empires. You love that game, game Age of Empires 2, and then you're on Twitch because of that. You find a, a raptor tournament. Yeah, like one day on um, like one day on YouTube, I just got recommended um, like. I wasn't with the community the entire time. I played it like when it was new for a while and then, you know, forgot about it. And then like one day, um, it just, this um, it recommendation just pops up in my feed um, as some Age of Empires 2 game. I'm like, what? People still play this? Mm -hmm. And I started and I started getting into it. And um, yeah, this one guy, T90 official who did casting of the game mm -hmm. and it, I went um, and because of his YouTube videos, I ended up going to Twitch yeah. and uh, in games there. Yeah. And, you know, and from there, I got sucked into um, uh, K a, a few um, other late night streamers, including K Witty. Mm -hmm. And K Witty sucked me into the McRaptor tournament and sucked me into the whole um, uh, Dark Souls uh, hitless community. Right. OK. And then from there, you're like, OK, K Witty's doing this. Raptor's doing this. I want to do this too. There's a hitless run that no one's doing. I think I can do that. And you're just like, yep. I'll, I'll start streaming. Yep. Yep. And that so that I, was that. <laughs> um, and yeah, basically, I um, spent um, well, a few months just kind of toying with the idea. It wasn't like I got, I decided to do it one day. Like I spent a few months toying with the idea and kind of every once in a while booting up, you know, firing up the game and seeing, okay, what about doing things this way? Yeah. Because the way I route, I don't like doing like intense big blocks. 
I do it like just in 20 minute chunks here and there throughout my days. Very balanced. And, you know, I'll get an idea of, oh, what, wait, what if I do this? What if I try this and that? And, uh, you know, boot up the game, try it out, mm -hmm. find mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. And then, you know, close down the game. And then the next day I have another idea. Right. So you're, and so you're... I end up routing it out. I'm like, holy crap, I can do this. You're this more of hard. A... Why is nobody doing this? Oh, uh, like a, a, a wait and let things come to you person. Um, I, I know oh, some, yeah. yeah, I know, and uh, you have a lot of patience. You're no, you're in no rush, basically. I guess it's not so much wait, but um, keep an eye open for opportunity. It's not entirely passive. I'm not waiting mm -hmm. for things to fall in my lap, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I believe in. I'm a very intuitive person, and I believe in kind of just keeping an eye open for opportunities and being ready to move when they present themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that's that's cool. No, I, I know someone like that, and I, I think there's a lot of value in that. I'm, I I can be like that, but I I'm also very impatient. So you where you would route and um, what's it called? You'd take a, a a day or two and then come back twenty minutes, twenty minutes, twenty minutes. What I would do is I would just be like, okay, we're doing this all at once. I'm gonna get a very concrete. A specific route going or like a skeleton of a route and then I'm gonna slowly improve on that but I'm gonna put a, a lot of work in I like doing one thing at a time but I also think I think there's something to the way you do things that is better um, and I think it's because I mean, it's different approaches each have their strengths and weaknesses well I think I think uh, when you let things come to you you're actually letting your brain process them and you're you're just you're not necessarily forcing or wow I can't believe that hit me forcing them or rushing them, um, but it's it's coming from you more internally. And what I find with those thoughts and those ideas is generally they're they're less likely to be wrong or or regretful. Um, they're less forced. They're less rushed. They're just I don't know. They just kind of line up with things better. I think. You know, I was having a thought. Um... I think ye yesterday when we were, you know, planning this, mm -hmm. I realized the, the a, a good analogy to explain the differences of my approach and your approach. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is really nerdy. This is a Dungeons and Dragons analogy. Okay. <laughs> you are you are a fighter class. Like, okay. If there is a battle to be fought, whether um, a verbal exchange or a challenge or whatever, if there is a battle to be fought, you are charging in, you are taking that head on. Right. I am a rogue. I prefer... I'm much more private of a person. I prefer to wait for opportunities and move swiftly and precisely when opportunities present themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have a sense of honor and, you know, challenge in these runs. I am like, okay, within the rule set, because we we agree on a rule set and things that are just flat out. Mm -hmm. You know, no, we're not hacking um, in hitless runs, but within the rule set, how can I gain an advantage? The exploitation, how can you exploit this? Yes. Yeah, you look at, you know, these challenges as tests of skill, mm -hmm. as, you know, how good can I be? How skilled can I become? I look at them as, okay, what strategies can I employ so that I don't have to be skilled? Ah, look at that. Yeah. And then there's, there's satisfaction <laughs> so it, it, for you as well in that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When I um, completely script out a boss and um, ju just have um, manipulate his motions in such a way where the fight works out the same every time, mm -hmm. one of my, my most satisfying fights in any Hitless run is um, in Elden Ring, Plaza Do 6. Plaza Do 6. It's 100% it's, it's scripted, ridiculously precise. Really? In what I have to do. It's okay. Um, I need to, um, let's see, Golden Vow, Exalted Flesh. Um, <laughs> I know, drink, I know all of these spells. Um, yeah. Five um, Bloodhound steps in. After the fifth, I need to um, crouch run to recharge some of my stamina. Um, as soon as he does the first lightning, I move just past that and then cast. Um, uh, rock sling then after that um i need to sprint right um to evade his second lightning strike um wait no it's three rock slings at the beginning i'd have to go back to the video but I i'm sorry i'm rambling oh no um, no 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 it's good but it's basically an incredible it's stamina management and very precise within like um a second or so mm -hmm. timings of my casts and strafes and such and positioning and spacing all to turn that fight into a scripted fight it's like a puzzle for you 
Like the satisfaction yes. comes from the the idea that there's a problem and you figured it out, not necessarily of mm-hmm. of of how you put the puzzle piece in, but more so that you you understand the bigger picture or you have found a solution. Um, yeah. Now, and the more precise it is, the more satisfaction I get out of it. And Placidusex is probably the most precise um, scripted kill I've ever done in any of these games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see? As yeah. far as stamina management and positioning and everything else. So. Oh, cool. Uh, out mean, of everything? Know, Dark Souls 3, Dark Souls yes. 1, all of that? Placidusex, okay. As far as just like a satisfying scripted kill, like... Mm-hmm. Within that framework, Placidusix is a joy. Good. Hey, that's that's actually really cool. No, I, um, I can definitely see it because I know that there are some people that, like you know, you you have kids that are young. The kid, there's well, there's a study done. Kids that are young that just like to do problems and puzzles just to do them generally do a lot. A lot better than other kids um but there are definitely kids like for me it's like i i, I don't know why i like the satisfaction of of execution so if i execute it properly i don't care what it is but if i'm able to do it precisely like i'm able to execute then i'm good you know but actually coming up with it and figuring it out like routing for me was never really a big deal because i'd be like well for one i'm not particularly good at it i'm not particularly great at it because when i play a game I just kind of go from point A to point B. What do I have? Mm -hmm. How do I get there? Okay, I can do it. I don't really go and explore the menus. I don't read the, what the items do. I don't read the statuses and stuff like that. I go, I go very bare bones. So by nature, you're the fighter, you charge in. I just charge in. Yeah. By nature, my, my routing is, is not great. So whenever someone just creates a route, I'm like, okay, yeah, I can do that. And I can improve upon it a little bit here and there. That's where my satisfaction Mm -hmm. comes from. But anyway, we were getting into how you got into streaming. So you were looking at this route, you were figuring things out, and then you were mm-hmm. contemplating it for what, weeks or a month or, or maybe a couple or something like that? So it was, okay, I, I actually know the exact time frame because okay. I have a story behind it. So okay. it was four months, mm-hmm. o- over the course of four months. Mm-hmm. And it was um, a month before Sekiro launched that I started streaming. Mm-hmm. And then within like the first couple weeks, I got a um, one hit run. Guess how long it took me after I got my one hit run to actually get the run? Oh, months. Five months. Five months. There we go. Yep. That's how I it remember goes. this time frame four, four months off stream, five months on stream, because that run was my goddamn baby. I nurtured that run for nine months. <laughs> and then one late September night, um, just after No Hit Jerome raided me, I gave birth live on stream to the, to the final, to the final, uh, success to the No Hit run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So why do you think, like, here's, here's an interesting question. Why do you think it took five months when you had the one, the one hit oh, run down? I know down? exactly why. Why? My, my strategies were, well, not perfect. I've since improved on them, but mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. my strategies were really good. So wh- going back to what you, a-, a question you asked earlier about um, purposes of streaming and actually why I haven't streamed lately. One of my, I had a few different goals in mind. One of the biggest goals, though, was I have never been somebody who can perform under pressure. Okay. Just the opposite. The only time I can be competent is when nobody's watching and I have no pressure other than my own internal drive to do something. It's like that's that, it. That character in Mystery Men. You ever watch Mystery Men? If there's any, ex- what's that? You ever you ever see Mystery Men, the movie? No. Oh, no? Oh, there's a superhero that can only go invisible when no one's watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, okay, that, that's perfect. Um, but yeah, so one of, one of my biggest goals was to learn how to succeed and perform under pressure. Mm-hmm. And I've recently, well, it was kind of, it's kind of a longer process, but I actually have somewhat recently achieved that. Okay. And that was like the biggest goal and the hardest to reach goal for me. And with, it actually started with um, the, the trilogy sorcery run, no hit run that it started and then, and then went through Elden Ring to the point where I got, 
I got um my first any percent in Elden Ring on my first um streaming attempt of it. First time I streamed it, I ended up getting it. You got your second round okay. of the night. That's pretty impressive. Um, well, well, let's go in order. Let's let's get to this eventually. Okay. Um, so okay, it took sorry, you sorry. no no don't worry. Um, it took you five months to get your first no hit run, uh, in Dark Souls mm -hmm. one, and then from there, what did mm -hmm. you decide to do? Well, um, so. Um, at this time, No Hit Jerome was setting up, was picking up the crown, the McRaptor crown, and becoming the successor to the No Hit tournaments. Right. And he was, and he, this is actually um, where the first thing you said to me, like in actual voice chat, as opposed to just um, text in, chat in you your have stream. A this good is the memory. first time. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have a good memory like you, you asked do. me. Um, what would I say to a um, tube, uh, a sock full of toothpaste? I said that, that was to your you. Question to me. <laughs> on the no, on the no hit tournament, like after my run, that was your question to me. A sock what full would of I toothpaste. Say to a, uh, a sock full of toothpaste. Was it like a sponsor reply, thing or something like that? No, um, this was just you being Farad okay. and like trying to throw the rookie off. <laughs> yeah, sure. And I told sure. you, okay, well, it depends on what it's for. Like, I could imagine you using it like um to beat someone with, like a sack of oranges. Like, yeah. if you want to beat someone without leaving bruises, mm -hmm. then yeah, yeah, a sock full of toothpaste. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Splatters everywhere. Yeah, sure. Okay, well, hey, that's a, that's a really <laughs> good so memory. That, that was that was our first conversation. I was casting. And it left yeah. an impact on you, so thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, um. So, no, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The reason, um, so when Jerome was setting this up, I'm still pretty unknown. I'm, I'm at about a 10 viewer average. Mm -hmm. A few people know who I am, but not really. And you've got a no and, hit run. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. But I was number, I was number 72 on the team hit list. So uh, uh, after the, uh, after the rush, the gold rush. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, before the big gold rush, now there's like 800 people. So you're right. I you stick around long enough, you become an OG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Being I in guess. the top 100, like people might draw some distinction, but a lot of the newbies aren't drawing a lot of a big distinction um, in that anymore. Well, it's, it's, it's a little weird to me, but oh, we could talk about that. It's it's well, I think it's lost its uh, what's it, novelty. And now it's oh, yeah, it's kind of like oh yeah everybody can do this anybody can do this the 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 sway on public opinion like the oh man do you see that it's really cool like that feeling where people are talking to each other that's kind of gone it's like a, a Netflix series where it's like you know it all comes out in the same week or day or something and then no one really talks about it because like do you see it it's like yeah I thought it was cool it's like okay cool versus a mm -hmm. series where it's like drawn out over months. People are like, did you see that episode? Oh, I wonder what happens next. Like they they talk about it. I think it's very similar for no hit runs when they were newer and they were like more novel. People are talking about them all the time. They're watching the runners get better at the runs. They're watching the competitions. But then as there became more runners um, and more runs, then it's just kind of like, hey, did you see that? It's like, oh, yeah, that was pretty cool. You know, so I, I think that's where the, yeah, yeah. The, the decline in popularity comes from. Or I don't one know of the if it's the decline because honestly, um, there's a lot of hitless streamers still pulling in numbers. I think it's you can't just do a hitless run anymore and expect that to be enough. That's yeah, that's you what have I mean. To yeah. Be doing ridiculously, um, running at a ridiculously high level, or mm -hmm. more. It's like the community and the entertainment value you can provide. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, you look at Hob. He is always, he is first and foremost an entertainer. The 100%. challenge running is simply a medium he uses to um, do that entertainment. But like his draw is, um, you know, he is skilled and that's part of his draw. But I think the bigger draw is his value as an entertainer. And I think that's what he prioritizes. 100%. No, no, no. And he's also got the founder effect going too. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, there's a, there's a big distinction between um, like someone like Gino. Gino is very, very, very skilled. Um, oh, Gino's ridiculous. I remember Colmer. Colmer was more about entertainment as well, making everybody feel uh, welcome and stuff I like that. Community, community focused. Yeah, which is kind of a subset. Like he, you know, he was very like intentional and hard in on building a community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and very, very good at it. Yeah, no, he was good at it. Uh, yeah, actually, I remember one of the. I remember meeting Colmer. I remember talking to him about stuff. He's a cool guy. I haven't. I. I do you. Uh, do you keep in touch with him or anything? 
No, I haven't. Um, part of it is, um, you know, kind of respecting his wishes to get space. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard some updates from Ghost and others, and um, last I heard he was doing really well, but... Oh, that's um, good. That's I, yeah, good, then. I think a lot of it is just kind of respecting his wishes. Um, he had moved on, and it's sad, but it, as all things must, um, the river has to keep flowing or else the water gets stagnant. That's a, that's a saying I've actually never heard before. I, I like it. I mean, it's I a, just made it up. That's oh, you just why, made it up. But, um, <laughs> that's the, yeah, that's impressive that you could make that up on the spot. The river has to keep, well, keep look, flowing, get, otherwise no, the I'm water gets stagnant. When I'm, I, I get poetic when it's late and I start getting a little loopy, so yeah. don't mind me. And but, you're on um, a five-hour energy. No, I really like that. That's true. Yeah, ponds, pond water gets stagnant for a reason. Um, so... Yeah, you have to embrace things moving on and things changing. Um, and, you know, there's some sadness that, um, you know, Hitless used to be really tight knit because it's easy to have a tight knit community when there's two dozen of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When it's you, Squilla, K Witty, um, Posse, and a couple dozen others, having a tight knit community is easy. Mm hmm. But when when it starts growing, um, it, when it's 800 people, you can't have the same sort of community that doesn't scale. Right. But you you have to um, do something else in its stead. Like what? And um, what that is, you know, and what it should be. Um, it, I would be interested in hearing your thoughts mm -hmm. on that. On Okay, if hit list could be whatever you wanted it to be, if you had the power to snap your fingers and make hit list uh, the challenges in the community, whatever you wanted it to be, what would you change? What would I change from how it is now or how it came up? Yes, how it is now. How or it, how it developed, whichever question is more interesting to you. Oh boy, this is a tough one because Why it's like um, truly run in thy veins. a lot of me, like I, I can see... I can see a lot of flaw in... Th oh, fuck. <laughs> I can see a lot of flaw in things that I'm not necessarily attached to. So whenever I talk mm -hmm. about things, people almost always Get assume... Defensive? They, they assume that I'm speaking from a position of being invested in that or not. Mm -hmm. So you can be critical of a show and they're like, oh, you must really hate it or you must really like it. It's like, no, I'm, I'm neither. I, you know, I just see it or a person or, or anything. Um, it's kind of like the same thing here. I'm not particularly attached to, to the idea of hit list or team hit list or challenge runs or anything like that. However, since I am like, I, this, I am have, I, well, I have been heavily involved in it for a long time. I can see the ins and outs. I can see how things go. Um, I can mm -hmm. see, like, you can, you could extrapolate certain sets of data, um, with that, like, and then you, you match that up to human behavior and, and how people generally interact, especially when they're developing and Twitch is not a 30, 40, 50 year old, uh, like a demographic, like that's not the main demographic. The main demographic is probably mm -hmm. 16 to maybe 26, something like that. And then diminishing, diminishing numbers yeah. after that. So there's a developmental period for the majority of the audience. And that's why a lot of the viewers go through the same processes. Like if you've streamed a while, like I've, I've streamed a while, I see the same person with a different name going through the same thing um, over the years consistently and with the same patterns. And it's because they're going through a developmental pattern and generally people respond the same to these things like there's there's a reason mm -hmm. that there are stereotypes and, and archetypes and things like that like uh you know a rebellious teenager or someone you know the, all, all sorts of things like that so if you, you yeah you bring the two sets um, of, there's going to be little variations person to person but um you know the kind of uh, trenches set and people are guided along it um mm -hmm. like i said tiny variations but most people will kind of follow the same patterns yeah you can you can predict a lot of these things and of course well you can predict with a certain error with a certain uh size of error confidence interval yeah 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 so it's like with that i called i called a lot of things beforehand and i i've done this for a while so i've, I've known school I'd, i've known hob and then i knew everybody that like you said there's 12 people um that came up and oh we're all close or we're all talking or we're all going back and forth with each other and i also 
uh, watched it go from Dark Souls 1 to Dark Souls 2 to Bloodborne to Dark Souls 3 to Sekiro to Elden Ring. So you can see how audiences interact between the games. You can see how streamers interact between the games. And you can see how communities are. And you can also see... Um, this is interesting. The nature of Twitch, it incentivizes uh, being out for yourself, which is like, okay, fair enough. That's fine. But you put all those things together and it's like, okay, well, look, I can predict, for example, that when Dark Souls 3 came out, um, sorry, when Sekiro came out from Dark Souls 3, what you have to do is you have to hit that game hard as a collective. So if everybody just does their own thing, it's not going to be nearly as popular. Um, whereas if everybody did what they did with Dark Souls 3, where it was Squilla for Oz Hob, Lev for You, Colby Cheese, and a couple of others all vying for the first no-hit run, that's going to bring a lot more popularity and a lot more attention to the category and a lot more longe mm -hmm. longevity to the category. But, well, a lot of people were just like, no, I just want to do my own thing. I just want to do this or that. Sekiro was also a game that was too hard for a lot of no-hit runners. Um, which is interesting because the whole idea of no hit is, oh, it's a very difficult challenge run. Uh, mm -hmm. But when it came down to it, Dark Souls uh, challenge runs in general were very accessible to pretty much everybody. Like if you weren't mm -hmm. skilled at the game or you didn't have fast reaction speed, you could figure out a way around it. Um, and mm -hmm. so what it did is it started to divide people in terms of skill. Sekiro really did that. It's like, okay, well, look, before we were all in one category, now we have the people who can run Sekiro, and now we have the people who can't, um, which is an interesting thing because that started to create a divide. And then from there, uh, you had channels dying because they're not playing Sekiro or they're not playing Sekiro well enough or there's a fracture in the community or there's not enough cohesiveness to bring all the viewers together. And then you have... It, you basically have entropy. Like the the mm -hmm. the forces keeping the community together were not greater than the forces of entropy. So other streamers, speedrun community, mm -hmm. all of these things, um, which creates a fragmentation. And with the fragmentation, you know things start to split off. And then so we saw this that happen as things progressed. After Sekiro, everybody went to Dark Souls three, back to Dark Souls three again. And then you started to see people leaving and new new faces coming in. You also started to see. Um, uh, the general, what the audience like shift. So it started with, okay, skill, hard, this, that. And then it started to shift towards, oh, this is nice to watch, or this is comfortable. A lot of girl streamers actually did very well during this time. There's people that came up. Lily Charles came up. Biotic Nova came up. Uh, Barry Crepe. Um, and there's more, of course, I'm for mm -hmm. forgetting them, but you see an audience shift there. Um, and then from Dark Souls 3 to Elden Ring, well... Now there were so many people coming into hit lists from different languages, different demographics, different whatever. Um, and there's so many people doing different things and there's the absence of the tournaments. And then Jerome went to WoW and did fairly good there until they banned his multi-boxing, which is kind of tragic. Um, and, and all of these things. And then you go to Elden Ring. And at the point where you go to Elden Ring, the community is entirely fragmented. Um, no one really knows each other other than their immediate clique. And there are cliques now, uh, I, I see. And uh, it's also, it's taking, it's almost like a bure bureaucratic corruption has taken place. Not really, like I wouldn't say that. But there are certain things when something gets to a certain size, there are certain corrupt or, or corrupt quote unquote things that happen, which basically uh, I, would, I would say is, is a... The better representation would be it's it's a pathological set of behaviors that end up working against the the goals of the whole, uh, <laughs> whatever the goals of the the collective, um, and I think that's what's what's happened. So uh, the question comes down to well, the question was what would I change currently, currently, and mm -hmm. what would I change in development? It depends in what respect, because if it's if it's for my own benefit, what would I change? Uh, I would probably change the specificity of the categorization of no hit. Because right now when people see things, they're like, oh yeah, this person does no hit. It's like, okay, well, what kind of no hit? Did they no hit Bloodborne any percent? Or did they no hit DS2 all bosses? Like which one? You know, did they, no -hit, did they do Hollow Knight uh, any percent? Or did they do... 
P5 hitless. You know, they're very different runs. And intuitively, you look at them, and if you don't know very much about the scene, you don't really know the difference when there is a very large Make difference there. Um, so if it was for my own benefit, that's something I would change. Um, but if it was just for the benefit of everybody involved, I would... I would remove the fragility bullshit, honestly. Um, I would remove the fragility bullshit and I would probably... I would probably... Like there's... Okay, this is going to be a little bit hard to explain and I don't want to misrepresent it. But there is a... Mm -hmm. Like, you know how a child should respect their parents. Um, mm hmm Generally, a child should respect their parents. And then you see children who will swear at their parents and who are like, no, I'm on the equal, the same level as you and stuff like that. Um, and it, it it's like an entitlement. Uh, it, it doesn't really lead to good things. So. Yeah, no, I get what you're talking about here. What I would do then is I oh. would try and take the entitlement out of the individuals who are within the community. I would I would probably try and and encourage a, a system of respect. Like, you know, if Gino's telling you something, you probably want to listen. He's done some, some really good runs. And I would also mm -hmm. want to create bonds, like actual bonds between certain people um, that aren't necessarily found anymore. So, like, for example, um, when Hob did the God run, for the first time, I remember a bunch of people just jumped on it because they wanted to be discovered, which is like fair enough, right? But at the mm -hmm. same time, Hob said he didn't want to compete and stuff like that. And this can go back and forth. And it's like, okay, well, you know, maybe you should give him that because yeah. he's the one that started everything. Like he's the reason a lot of people are successful. I remember you being very critical of uh, Squillakilla when he started going for the God Run at the yes. same time, or there was something like that. Um, you know, me and Squill actually, and it, we talked yesterday. We had a we had a long conversation. Oh yeah, yeah Squill is one of my best friends. How's he doing? Oh, he's doing great. Yeah, he's doing great. We talked about, you know what we talked about? We talked about AI. I have all this stuff written <laughs> right now. Squill is so smart, man. He is, he is so smart. Oh, dude. Yeah. He is a virtuoso man. I'm I'm glad I met him. But yeah, I was very I was very critical of school at that time. And I was I was critical of others, but I was like, you know, I want there to be a modicum of like if we were in real life this would be okay or like a rivalry rather than a an ex exploitive yeah. nature to things. Um the, I I basically it would be like to to just bring it together to be more cohesive to be to be well, to be more in line with reality that's what i would say so i i i um understand a lot of what you're talking about mm -hmm. um okay as far as um okay i and um there's several things um to um catch up on sure so you talked about you want first of all you talked about you wanting there to be more distinction in you know categories of runs and uh, caliber and quality and uh, tiers of runs basically right yeah and for me right. i don't i don't care anymore because i'm not really doing runs but i know that would be uh but you think that would be good? Yeah, it's I, like I you have say. a speed run, a world a record thing. speed run versus a, you know, you don't really have that in no hit. You just kind of have, did you do it or did you not? Like the, the quality of... So the question of, is, yep. um, how do you implement that? And what sort of bureaucracy is involved with that? That's a tough one. How would I implement that? It's like, oh, fuck. Like, you know, you would have to have everybody within the hit list kind of committed to that. And Gino tried to do that. Gino and Couch tried to do that in certain things they did, like uh, uh, what was the the Team Hitless website? That's that's uh, founded by Gino and Couch, I think. I could be wrong, but no, I no, that's founded by Ghost. By Ghost. Ghost. Ghost founded. Oh, okay, that, yeah. that's my she, mistake. She was the first person, and actually, I, I want to go off on a little tangent here. Mm -hmm. From how I've watched the Hitless community grow, it's always been who's going to step up. Mm -hmm. McRaptor first stepped up to host these tournaments. Willa stepped up to make the stream team, the Team Hitless team. Um, Ghost stepped up to make uh, the website. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not exactly sure who, but I think it was um, Kazoodle and a few others stepped up to make uh, the Discord. 
you know, no, after M McRaptor left, um, Jerome was the one who stepped up to run tournaments. Mm -hmm. It's always like leadership in the community has always been who wants to step up and do something mm -hmm. who wants to actually organize and herd the cats oh. because we're all independently minded and so who wants to actually like roll up their sleeves and herd the cats right yeah who's yeah. willing to do that and it, whoever's willing to do that whoever has both the willingness and the skill to do that is the one who ends up in charge right okay so then with that in mind because i think you're you're very right what I would say is more, oh, look at that, more appreciation or more uh, rec recognition for the people who do step up. Because it's one thing to step up, and then if, if you get nothing out of it, it's like, well, why did I do that? You know? It's one thing yeah. to start running tournaments, and then people, uh, I remember Raptor had this, had this issue, was like people weren't giving him the credit for the tournaments or the respect or, you know, I, I remember... Zeus was trying to restream his tournaments without permission and go behind oh, his yeah. back. You know, stuff, <laughs> stuff like that. And it's like, if, if there's no, like if you're doing a bunch of work or you're putting yourself out there and you're getting nothing back consistently, mm -hmm. no one ever is going to step up. There's no reason to. There's no incentive structure. Yeah. Right? Um, and so nothing's going to get done. It's just going to stay, stay the same, which kind of goes back to what I was saying. It's like, you know, take the entitlement out and how do you do that well there's gratitude it's like oh thank you for doing this and let's build each other up rather than let me take what i can and then scurry for forward mm -hmm. and that's kind of a wider societal problem i think mm -hmm. as far as um you, it, it's a powerful skill that has that's unfortunately less common than it should be is practicing gratitude and mm -hmm. actually finding that being a transformative force in your own life for when, you know, things aren't going your way or you're facing difficulty or challenges, finding gratitude and really cultivate, it's a cultivation. It's something you have to work on and, you know, plant the seeds in your mind about being grateful, mm -hmm. convince yourself that being that gratitude is something that can help you cultivate that, get, get in the habit of being, of um, feeling gratitude and then let that enrich your life. Mm -hmm. And that's just a skill that's been in decline. And honestly, you know, as much as the, you know, somebody being ungrateful might be a pain in the ass for you or I, it's hell on that person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah, hell it's... to live a life where you're just bitter and resentful, um, ungrateful for anything. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's uh... so. I mean, that's a pain in the ass for having for people who have to interact with that person. But for that person, it's hell. It's uh, it's almost like a, so, a, a different interpretation I... of karma, right? You, yeah. you, and... yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, but um, this is where I really love and admire Ben Rice and uh, where I find value in his streams is uh, he is very mindful and very expressive about the role of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Ben Rice is... I get to is... do this. I want to do this. I choose to do this. And he's... Uh, he's With in... um, gratitude and joy, my full effort and best intent... My, um, my best effort and full intention... Yes, and and he's not just like he's not just someone like uh, so he's like yeah. one of my best friends too. But he's the, he's one of the strongest people in the world. Like he's not just yeah. like uh, he lifts weights or and plays games. It's like no Ben Rice has he's won Arnold's, he's won Nationals, he's one of the strongest people in the world. So obviously there's something there. Um, yeah, he's, he's yeah, a, he demonstrates it. He shows it. He shows the results of it. He is a world champion powerlifter, a um, world record speedrun holder. Mm -hmm. Although I think that's former, actually. But, you know, he's a, an amazing singer. <laughs> he is, yeah. Um, yeah. A, a fantastic conversationalist. Like, th this is where I admire him. He's, you know, this multifaceted, highly skilled individual who practices cultivation and then demonstrates the practices gratitude and then demonstrates its value. Yes, no, he does that very well. One, th the thing about him is like he is so, he is so incredibly uh, developed in certain areas. But I wish I, I've told them this too, so it's not like I'm saying this behind his back. But I wish he would let, like he would unleash himself on the world. Um, one thing he does is he he holds back a, a lot of the time. Um, 
and he, you know, he like, uh, he'll tiptoe around people. And it's like, mm-hmm. I, I, what I want for him is just, I, I want him to like, it's almost like he dims himself, if that makes sense. Like he's, he can shine so bright yeah. and he does at sometimes uh, at, at certain points, but in other situations, he'll just, he'll dim himself down so that no one else is blinded or something. Um, but I, I wish he would just, I wish he would just blind everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, no one's perfect, and <laughs> we all have our struggles and travails in life, and it, that is probably a large part of his. Sure. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so with that, um, back to what you were saying with the, the leadership, how would you conclude that? Like, how would you finish that thought? Because what would you change about that? Because you said, what okay. would I change? Yeah, because you asked me, like, what would I change about the community? And then oh. you, you brought up, okay, well, so, people that step up. Go ahead. This... This is going to be a non-answer. I think it's as good as it could be given the circumstances. Really? Like, I, I could say I can like point out flaws, but what would I change? What would be better? I don't know. I I genuinely don't have any answers. I think given you know all the variables, given the overall situation, yeah. things turned out better than um you might expect and about as good as they could have given everything you know in a perfect world obviously everything would be sunshine and rainbows and uh, we'd all be swimming in the um fat hitless books but you know maybe you're right maybe it's like maybe uh, i i like to look at things in terms of systems of damages so it's very easy to take the system you have and criticize it for Mm -hmm. whatever it is but then not 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 relative to the alternatives um, whereas if you if you take it in relation to the alternatives, oftentimes it's actually pretty good. So maybe how things mm-hmm. are right now are actually pretty good in comparison to some of the alternatives of how Hitless could have gone. Um, mm-hmm. And I take this approach where I ask you this question because I don't want to just... Dis- There's certain things you said that I agree with, certain things I don't agree with, but just because I disagree with you doesn't mean you're wrong. In fact, it's more likely I'm wrong. I want to understand where you're coming from, mm-hmm. and rather, in, with the things I disagree with, I don't want to dismiss them. I want to more fully understand, and so I've actually had this conversation with uh, Couch Jockey and... Um, a couple others oh, of I got a the message couch, old actually. school hitless runners. Yeah. Um, and you know, my question is, okay, so what do you see? What would you have different? And how would we do that? How would we do? That's the tough. You one. know, that is the tough one. So it's it's kind of about oh oh, you know, and this is an approach I take with several things in life. It, you know, when talking with people is okay. Um, well, actually, there. I have this story. When I was working at the U.S. Census office, I was an office operations supervisor, mm-hmm. and um, there was this very um, competent and assertive woman who worked there. Um, and we were, you know, setting up some. Um, we were setting up operations to. We were setting up like a process to um, put together these binders for the people who were actually going out and doing the counts. Right and. Um, you know, she was stepping up and taking command, even though it was my responsibility to set things up. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I said, Bev, Bev, OK, listen, there's a process here. Of course, I'm she's going a Bev. to tell you how I want to do things. Then you're going to tell me why I'm wrong and then we'll do things your way. Right. OK, fair enough. I told her that and it kind of stopped her for a second. And what it did is I like the kind of subtext that is i'm telling you i'm going to i'm promising you that i'm going to listen to you and if you're right there's no ego on my part we're going to do this right right if you're right then we're going to do things your way but the the side of that is you have to listen to me Mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna work together And so that's how with somebody very forceful and assertive who was you know just kind of taking command and maybe didn't respect um my ability to do this Mm -hmm. Um, I was able to convince her to listen to me, and um, yeah, we worked together collaboratively from there. And it all so worked that, out that's well. Kind of, and so I come, I'm kind of reminded with that, with that, with um, you know some of the old school hitless people talking about how the community is now. Mm-hmm. I mean, so that's why I start with okay. So if you had full power, like the full support of. Uh, 
at least a large segment of Team Hitless, yeah. what would you uh, have done? Well, that's that's a tough thing as well because it, it's very personal. Like it's it's a uh, mm -hmm. it's a personal because that goes into, for example, whoever you ask, they're going to look at Hitless and see what they want within not just the community but with people as well. So generally for me, like I want people to be better than they are, or I want them to live mm -hmm. up to their potential, or I want them to strive, whatever. You can say it a bunch of different ways. So then when I see hit lists, I'm like, oh, I want, I want that to be reflected within the individuals and as a whole. But then ultimately it's, it's also like, it's, it's an ever changing dynamic. People that were mm -hmm. in hit lists four years ago, three years ago, aren't in, aren't around now. And then there's people that are, that are OG that are just, you know, like Squilla took three months off. I've taken a lot of time off. I'm not really doing hit list runs anymore. It's a very hard question to answer. Um, but if we mm -hmm. went into more specifics, like the leadership thing that you talked about, it's like when people step up, I think they should be incentivized to actually step up. Um, things like that are easier to answer. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cause it's like- what I don't disagree with you. So <laughs> that's a matter of, um, spreading the gospel of gratitude yeah yeah that, well that's a societal problem but Con convincing people persuading people to practice gratitude more so that um the community has stronger bonds and stronger appreciation for those who do step step up um okay and in well, regards to this quickly quickly okay i actually oh no sorry sorry okay, okay. Let, let me but i have something i'm really eager to jump in here yeah I'll, I'll say it after you go ahead okay so with the whole gratitude thing, it goes both ways, though. And this is an experience I had with the Sekiro tournament uh -huh. um, that McRaptor ran. Right. And, okay, I, I love Eric. I admire him. I appreciate him everything. But right. I have some criticism for after the Sekiro tournament. So the Sekiro tournament was going to be, like, the biggest thing yet. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he got a bunch of volunteers to help with a lot of the coordination. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, you know, Slippery Susie, and there were like 10 of us running, like helping run the event, like doing, you know, communication with the runners and, you know, counting hits and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. There was about, you know, 10 or 12 of us doing that. Yep. For the event. And there were a couple hitches, but overall, Susie did a great job coordinating us and mm -hmm. everybody did their best and it went off fairly well. Mm -hmm. When McRaptor... Um, after that tournament, McRaptor made a blog post where he oh, talked about, shit. you know, that was the last tournament he was going to run and he was leaving. And part of it, he didn't get too nasty, but he did kind of speak about how he didn't feel that he was appreciated enough and how he was out here by himself with no help. Yeah, he can be and uh, that kind of a that pissed me off. Yeah, because it's an overstatement and. Did McRaptor get the gratitude and appreciation that he deserved? Probably not. But did he get no gratitude? Bullshit. Did he get no help? Bullshit. Right. Okay. And, so, and that feels and and so that you know, the the lack of gratitude, the um, lack of gratitude he experienced, he then spreads on to us, and doesn't and then give it, us the proper and then appreciation. It cycles. I see. Um, so gratitude like respect is a two-way street i feel and so if you you know and i won't deny it that um you and many of the ogs aren't given in general aren't given the respect you are owed oh I, I just, for me i don't i don't really mind about least, that at least oh yeah i know me um, you don't take it personally but i guess i'm speaking more generally i would caution at the same time be appreciative of those who do pay you that respect Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's mm -hmm. uh. Oh and wow, I'm trapped. That's in not here. directly at you, but it's kind of a thought I had in general about the whole entitlement issue. You're not wrong, but there's kind at the same time, gratitude's a two-way street, mm -hmm. and I I've seen lack a lack in both directions from time to time. Well, gratitude between people. Okay, so l let me break that down into two, two, well, three different things. And then we mm -hmm. can we can address them one by one. So one, what I was going to say before was that um, I think Twitch and social media in general are systems that do not incentivize good qualities. For example, gratitude. I think 
Twitter definitely does not. <laughs> um, oh but, God, Twitter is yeah, a fucking trash Twitter fire. Is a, yeah. I use that for shit posting. Yeah, yeah. But, no, t- Twitter is designed for anger because anger drives engagement. Um, and, and I think no, it's no. Tw- Twitter's a fucking dumpster fire. You're not gonna get any argument from. I think it's similar me. on in Twitch in some aspects because. Uh, in a lot of aspects, you're incentivized to be a victim. And that's, again, that is on the opposite side of the spectrum. Um, but that's just a, that's just a off thought of what we were talking about. I think the, the medium Mm -hmm. we're, the platform we are on or the culture of the platform we're on while I, I, I'm like, you know, it's good. It's, there's a lot of good things about it. I think that is one of the most destructive components of it. The incentivization of, of victimhood, um, so if you want to talk about that, we can. Otherwise, I'll just jump to the next point. Uh, the raptor. Mm, I'm not sure I have much to add there other than to just agree. And this is a general problem in social media. Um, but that's a whole big rant. of Like, w- w- if we go down that road, we're going to be talking about social media all night. And mm. um, I'm going to need to fire up um, uh, another five-hour energy for that. And I'm yeah, not yeah, going yeah, to yeah, let yeah. you yeah. go. Yeah, okay. So well, maybe, we... maybe we put that in a pin. Um, if you really want to discuss that, we can sometime. We can always come back. Yeah, we can go. always do this again. I guess this has gone <laughs> fast and I thought it would. Um, okay, so then let's talk about rap dad. Um Rap dad. And so I will talk about this from a position of being as objective as possible, uh, because, mm-hmm. uh, well, I've known rap dad for a long time. Um, I was, mm-hmm. I was, uh, one of the first on GG talent and now I was, uh, I was, I was kicked off of teropium. So there is good blood and then there's bad blood between us, Ooh. you know, so there's, there's both, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm going to try uh-huh. and not bring any of that into it at all. And so I can also acknowledge it, that um, just to preface, I wasn't trying to, you know, specifically target McRaptor. It was just a good example yeah. to talk about a more general issue. And like I said, nothing but appreciate. I have um, nothing but appreciation and respect and one criticism. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. But we, we can talk about it. But um, I respect him enough to criticize him. That's a, that's a good thing to say. That. Actually, you respect someone to criticize someone. Because what does that mean? That means that you think that they can take the criticism and not hold it against yeah. you for whatever whatever reason it might be um and that, also if i don't if i don't care about you i'm not gonna bother criticizing you're you. you're not gonna bother exactly going to ignore you yeah it's just gonna, like you're not worth the time it, and you're not it's worth, if the, I care worth the energy about you and want you to do better that i'm going to criticize right yeah there's something to be said about that that i, I don't think people uh realize is they don't make the connections super often but anyway so i will i will try and talk about this as objectively as possible not in a good light okay. not in a bad light just so i don't mm-hmm. you know so i so people aren't like oh you're just mad about this or you're just happy about this because it'll go both ways and then you know but um what will i say so i will say well first of all no one's perfect so there's good and bad to everyone and there are certain mm-hmm. system situations that you will place yourself in um mm-hmm. that will bring out the bad in you the the bad parts of you out more and there's certain system like you know if you if you take uh <laughs> this is the only thing i can think of a sex offender to a party it's going to be like, okay, you, you maybe shouldn't do... Oh, easier one, alcoholic to a party. Okay, you know, probably shouldn't mm-hmm. do that. They're, they're more likely to get drunk or they're more likely to fall um, or be fall, fall susceptible to their weaknesses or, or, or things that generally bring out destructive or, or not great mm-hmm. behavior. Um, yeah. and At the very least, if they're going to go, it needs to be a very intentional and have a plan. Mm -hmm. it can't just be you know come to this party it'll be fine yes yeah and um there's also uh there's 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 things that people do like often like this is how trauma works so trauma a person who experiences trauma will often put themselves back in the same situation over and over and over and over again hoping for a different result or trying to Mm -hmm. get a different result just to resolve the trauma in their brain and so people sometimes are attracted to situations um that will bring out bad things in them so if you don't feel respected you're going to put yourself in a situation where people are going to disrespect you and you're hoping or you're trying to figure out a way for them to actually respect you instead same thing happens with relationships now i'm not saying that that's what happened here with rap dad because i don't think it is but there is a there is a there is a component of that there so i'll also say that tournaments there are a lot of work and he did 
a mm-hmm. lot of it. Uh, casting was oh, fun. Yeah. I, I had fun casting and stuff like that. But there's like, you know, mm-hmm. there's like a chip on people's shoulder. So it's like um, they say that Kanye wrote his best music while when he had the chip on his shoulder. Same thing with Drake. I don't really like Drake's music. But they say this about a lot of artists. Like it, when it comes from a, a, a place of passion or, you know, oppression or whatever it might be, then they do their best work then. Um, there so, needs to be some pressure. There, there has to be some. There has to be something. There has to be some human emotion that is not necessarily good. So the resentment is a really good one for uh, a lot of people who do music or bitterness. Like you know how love songs, like a lot of people oh, yeah. make love songs, and it's because of a broken heart. A lot of rap music is from the resentment or bitterness from this, or like no, I'm going to overcome. Let me show you. Like there's a lot of that. Mm-hmm. So um, what I think happened a lot was. Rap Dad went into a situation and he went into a situation where he's not going to get the respect. He's, he's not. Because we know that when people step up, and we, it's not like we just learned that then. It's like, no, we knew that all along. When people step up, you're not going to be given uh, the respect for stepping up. It's kind of like people are going to take what they can and then more, more or less act on, in their own best interest. As long as their best interest aligns with yours, then good. And it's short term. It's not even long term. So short term. Um, so he was managing these tournaments and I could see him getting more and more agitated and upset about it because on one mm-hmm. hand you have, oh, these tournaments are pulling good numbers. A thousand, oh, when it was on front page, 12,000 um, uh, good donations for charity. You know, my prize pool went to some save the children thing you, you know you yeah. feed the kids you gotta village, you feed the kids us. yeah and i was like okay whatever and people are volunteering and and doing this work but i think the the fact that th- it didn't translate to anything um because it, it doesn't translate to anything you run a tournament once in a while yeah. you organize all these people it doesn't translate to anything people know you now but twitch wasn't giving him any special treatment in fact they were giving him um, they're like, they short, a bit of the shaft. They, they shafted him a, a few times and not only that, but other people yep. shafted him a few times. Like the thing with, uh, mm. the Zeus, like that was not great. Um, yeah. and, and then a few other people, like this is not necessarily a thing of, of maliciousness, but it's more of negligence. There is, you know, entitlement here or there, or like, why am I not in the running? Well, it's because you're not good enough. It's like, well, I'm a no hit runner. I should be. It's like, no, that's not how it works. People, you don't just, no, you don't turn on the NBA game and be like, who's that? Oh, that's a guy who got in there because he is an NBA player. It's like, no, you want the best of the best. That's what people like to watch. Mm-hmm. So there, there's all this going on. And I think together, like putting all that together, you get, you, well, you have an ego and you have a desire mm-hmm. for respect. So it starts there and it's, that's already bad. But, you know, yep. it's not uncommon. Well, it can be. And then you have, then you have agitators that are going to directly mm-hmm. poke and prod at that ego. And when yeah. things don't go perfect, they go okay, but they don't go perfect, the ego is going to see that as not like an okay thing, but a bad thing. And then what that leads to, or what that led to in this case, was a blow up or an explosion. And mm-hmm. there's, there's, there's some saying here somewhere, but it's probably something along the lines of like, when you're so fixated on what's going wrong, you're not going to see what's going right. And I think that's, that's potentially what happened. The, the people that were oh, helping exactly and were... exactly what happened. I agree 100%. Were and doing that's things. why I say I don't really hold it against him. I, I'm not mad at him about that. The only reason I brought that up is it was, an, it was kind of an example to make a point that you had. And it's led to a pretty good conversation here about the role of enti- about entitlement and gratitude in the community and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. maybe how we can address that if uh, we so want to this is tough too because i also d- i i don't think i don't think you're ever going to get it out of twitch you know i i think it's well, a, it's a problem maybe not a hundred percent but if you could reduce it somewhat there's value in that it's not an all or nothing thing but um if you explain can improve that, that Ex- uh, go further with that for me well, I mean, okay, so there's always going to be um, some asshole in your chat. Yeah. Who um, does something to piss you off, um, or you just don't like, or who, uh, you know, whatever. There's always going to be some assholes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But what can be done as a community to not eliminate that entirely, but reduce it? Because I feel like with 
a lot of problems, people are like, well, if it doesn't solve the problem 100%, it's not even worth doing. But uh, I'm, I'm a lot like reduce, that, actually. Yeah, I'm a lot like that. And, and that's a really bad thing because yep. there yeah, is, is no perfect solution. There is no perfect solution to any problem. Yes. It's always about what can we do to make things better now? What can we do to make things better going forward? Um, what can we do to um, get us to the next milestone to buy us some more time to get a better solution? Sure, but that also Solving assumes that... Solving problems is an iterative process. That also assumes that us is a collect... Like, there is an us, mm -hmm. you know? It assumes that there is an us and that there will be an us in the long term. So if there's no mm -hmm. us, then there's no problem to solve because everybody wants different things um, or everybody wants something for themselves. And so uh, I agree with like that is that is something that I would consider less beneficial for me than beneficial. Like there are such situations yeah. where it is beneficial, but oftentimes it's like, okay, can this be fixed? Okay, it can't leave it, leave it, like let it go, mm -hmm. whatever, move, move my yeah, attention here. Get off the pot. Mm -hmm. So then, then it comes down to like, okay, well, for example, what problem are we trying to solve? Um, what are we trying to make better? You have to have clear goals in mm -hmm. order to, to figure them out. And the problem yeah. is that no one is tied to another person. Like you're not accountable to another person. Uh, the, the accountability you feel in real life towards someone that you meet in person, that's one thing. But that is heavily diminished by the internet. And that is heavily diminished by things like messaging instead of calling. That is diminished by, you know, uh, the general networking practices of Twitch and other social media and things like that there's a lot in this space that de-incentivizes actual human human bonds and heavily incentivizes um like a free a free uh free what is it is it a free runner it's not a free runner it's a free loader i don't think it, it might not be free loader but a free loader type of mentality whereas you go with the the group the tribe you do as little work as possible and you try and seek maximal benefit from that as well um mm -hmm. which if you have a, a tribe or a group of freeloaders that's a pretty big problem they're not really going to get anything done like maybe one or two of them will but you know it, it's a very hard environment to work in so w well with all this you can, you can talk about that in general if you want but the question would be <laughs> well what is our collective goal as a let's say a souls community or let's say a twitch community <laughs> I guess that goes back to my initial question of what you would change. <clears throat> because if you right now spit out a um, you know, clear idea of what hit list should be, okay, that's our goal then. Oh. And then the question becomes, how do we implement that? But would it be our goal or would it be my goal? Well, um, every goal starts off as one person. Like, we're not a hive mind. It starts off with one person with a goal, and they convince other people that that is a g goal worth pursuing. Right. Okay, so then here, here's a, a good uh, an example of what of the problem I would be having there. So no one likes clickbait titles. Um, yeah. And they all are like, oh, it's clickbait. Oh, it's clickbait. Oh, this is annoying or whatever. But the, the bottom line is they work. Like clickbait titles do work. I am much more oh, yeah. likely to click on something with caps than not caps. It's just kind of how we're wired. Well, um, you, okay. Mm -hmm. You said you are more likely to click on clickbait titles and uh, thumbnails. I, I, Be I, the change you want to see in the world. Make. I do this too. I make an active effort if something's too clickbait. Yeah. I, I refuse. Even if it captures my attention, even if I want to, I have cultivated a hatred of clickbait to such an extent where I, well, not a hatred, I would say a repulsion. Mm -hmm. A repulsion to clickbait to, I have intentionally cultivated a, um, a repulsion to clickbait to such an extent to where it overrides that natural instinct that, you know, clickbait psychologically taps into. Okay, so then here's a question. Now, not as a viewer, but as a content creator, do you just not ever make clickbait titles? Pretty much, um... But the thing is, but I have the luxury of not being a professional. Okay, so now put your <laughs> put yourself in the position of a professional and say, okay, look, clickbait's very yeah, popular. Yeah, it's not that simple. But it starts with being the change you want to see. It starts with you not clicking on clickbait and encouraging others to cultivate that um, repulsion and spreading that message. Sure. Okay. And, 
But and there's been some movement in this, I think. A lot of people do, you know, clickbait as a meme, do it, um, you know, with a wink and a no nudge, which isn't ideal, but it, like, just are open about, yeah, this is a clickbait, it's really fucking stupid, but this is the game we have to play. And I think most people respect that. An awareness, of course, yeah. So, like, there's that, but it is still clickbait like that it is uh yeah. it is operating in the sphere that this is this is clickbait and so th the thing i'm i'm trying to to point at is you can you and i can stop interacting with clickbait all we want and uh mm -hmm. i i can like uh, let's say if we're making videos we can just put very non-clickbaity titles okay elden ring first playthrough here you go something like that you know yeah but when it comes down to it we're going to experience less interactivity which translates to success because of it yep. you're going to experience less engagement you're going to experience less this less that and so couple that with other incentive structures you mm -hmm. are you are more or less shooting yourself in the foot um Pretty and, much. Well, at the very least, you are um, putting a, hand, a substantial handicap on yourself. You're putting a handicap on yourself. And it's like there's there's one thing where it's like, OK, I can afford to do it. Let's say I'm a very good carpenter and I live in a city where they all know me. I don't necessarily have to adhere to these principles. But in a, in a in an atmosphere where it is hyper competitive and hyper unstable as well as hyper uncertain, mm -hmm choosing not to do a clickbait title um, can make the difference between 10,000 views and a million. Like it, it's stupid yep. how that works, but it, it can, it, it scale. It's um, there's a momentum to it. It scales by orders of magnitude. Um, I'm not presenting my um, solution as perfect and uh, all encompassing, mm -hmm. but the, the step that's involved. Okay. It starts with you and I, well, and then it goes and part of it is I talk about it. If clickbait comes up and I have the opportunity to talk about it, I talk about this and about cultivating a repulsion to clickbait. Mm -hmm. And then that idea spreads. And I mean, most people listening are, you know, might say, oh, that's stupid or, um, oh, that's maybe interesting and won't do anything with it. But a lot of persuasion is about planting seeds. It's not about like are destroying someone with facts and logic and um, dismantling them and getting them to grovel before you about how they were wrong about <laughs> yeah, okay, everything. Yeah. A lot of persuasion is simply plant a seed, make an argument, be open, listen to them because people will listen to you more if you um, actively listen to them. Yes. And just plant the seed. Okay. And see what happens in a year or two. So then here's the question. This ties back to the whole group goal versus individual goal. Let's mm -hmm. say I have a hitless community of, I don't know, um, 30 people. And okay. my ideal, let's just, let, we can do it with the, um, we can do it with something like Hobbes God Run. Okay. My okay. ideal would be like, look, you should respect them, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he started all this. He just wants to do the God run. And because of that, you know, just go do a different run. You're only doing it because he's doing it. And I know you want to be discovered and stuff like that, but there's other stuff you can do. Make the large yeah, and true. vast majority of people are not going do to listen it. to that. They're just going to be like, well, no, I, I'm going to do the God run. And it's because I want to. And it's because, well, hey, I have to look out for myself and he doesn't own uh, the rights on anything or anything like that. And it's, it's like, mm -hmm. it, 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 I'm not, I'm not uh, targeting anyone specifically here. A lot of people were like that. And then what's going to happen is they're going to do the God run. A, a few of them are going to succeed or, or get big, bigger channel sizes off of it. They're going to benefit from it, right? There's an incentive mm -hmm. structure in place to do something against well, the ideal. And then from there, it's like, okay, well, so what is the collective group goal like you know having here's the thing though yep um the thing with that is is somebody did beat hob to um the god run two. Mm -hmm. somebody did it before hob mm -hmm. at the moment i cannot for the life of me recall who he is though yeah it didn't work and it didn't work out so you know yeah maybe an incentive but it kind of doesn't work no, no, no. Um, it, it, at least like, in this instance. In this instance, it might have not worked, but the whole idea is is we're trying to figure out what the how to create a group goal and work towards that. And what, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is that there is no group goal, and there never will be. Because, oh, Dabi-sama, thank you, Mario. 
Sorry. No problem. <laughs> you reading? Are you reading my chat? I am. Yeah, um, I don't uh, have it open. Uh, yeah. One of your viewers actually um, pointed out to me who it was. It was ah, Dabi Sama. Okay. Um, so, but my what I'm saying is there there is no group goal because there is no incentivization to be a group. There's none. Um, mm -hmm. Not past a certain point, and because there's no group goal, we can't really we can't really work towards anything together. It's more of like a you know just get the best you can yeah. and don't try as much as you can to not compromise your morals along the way. Um, that's the argument I, I would make. So when it's like, okay, well, what would you change about hit list? It's like, well, I, I don't, I don't know. Like for me, I would do this, but as a community, mm -hmm. I don't think there really is a collective, you know, I don't, and I don't think there ever really will so, be. So the first um, step is to create a collective. Well, how, that's the thing. How do you create a collective? Um, that stays a collective, like what incentive structures do you use? Because right now there is no place for those incentive structures. There's none. What, what, yeah. go, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, so yeah, essentially, um, so the first step would be creating those incentive structures, creating more of um, a consensus, building that consensus and um, creating a more feeling of collective and, I mean, in some senses, you know, there have been people who tried, I mean, in some senses and have to some extent succeeded, like with McRaptor in the tournaments um, that cr that helped create a community of hit lists mm -hmm. um, it did help. with the website. It didn't make it wasn't 100 percent effective. It wasn't as um, cohesive as we might like, mm -hmm. but um, so maybe the tragedy is um, not enough people um pushed for that or well I, I i mean this is all things with social groups which i'm never good at um to begin with so that's why i always resort to these more individualist approaches like you know what would you do what would you have done here uh -huh. and this is also why i really respect the people who have stepped up and put things together and made things happen Right. And uh, well, we can, the, the, the intentions that they have also come into play, but it's, um, it's a tough problem. Cause the way I see it is like, there isn't a collective hit list. There never will be. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you, if you, um, create your, like your driving forces or, or your driving goals or your, your direction on the basis that there is, or there will be, I think it will lead to, mm -hmm. I, I don't think it will lead to anything good. I think it will it'll do the opposite, actually. Um, I think the atmosphere as it is, um, and potentially rightly so, is one of free riding. That's what it, they're free riders. That's what they're called. Um, everybody for themselves. And it's it's big enough that, uh, like, I think it was, what, 800, 900 people? That, that's almost... Yeah, it's 800 some, I believe. That's almost all it can be. Um, it, it it won't ever it, it it's gotten to a point where it's like it won't ever not be that um everybody like even look at elden ring what were the agreed on rules for the run nothing anything went you know um you can glitch <laughs> glitch radagon you can do this and that's called a hitless run and it's like why it's because everybody was vying to get the first run because they know that that's going to be the most popular, that's going to get the most engagement, that's going to get the most attention. There was no agreed upon set of rules that, hey, we're going to do this for the, the good of the group. It was just like, every man for himself, go get it. And I think that's how it's mm -hmm. going to be for now on with, with everything, and that's how it should well, be regarded. It, I'm not inclined to be so negative. I don't I, think I that's a negative there's thing. there's nothing specific. Yeah. Well... I guess I have a more optimistic outlook is how I'll phrase that. Okay. Um, I think so when, you know, when people were criticizing, you know, why didn't we have rules in place here um, for Elden Ring? Um, this isn't the first time a game has been released to, uh, since Hitless has been a thing. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I explained, okay, when Sekiro came out, there were about 50 Hitless members. When Elden Ring came out, we're talking uh, almost 700. Right. 700 plus. So that is an order of magnitude greater. So if you want to know why, um, you know, things, why, you know, things weren't as smooth with Elden Ring as they were with Sekiro, just consider the size and scale. Mm -hmm. Because scale matters for things like group cohesion. Right. Yes. Yeah, I agree. So, 
Well, what I'm saying is that because the size is so large, you need more authority to manage it. So you need like like an empl employment mm -hmm. structure. There has to be individual incentivization to adhere to the rules of the group. And yeah. with, no, with a size so large and no one with that level of innate authority, like no one can step up and be like, okay, I'm, I'm leading Hitless right now and everybody's going to listen. You're going to have to be like, I'm mm -hmm. leading Hitless right now and I'm going to pay you each uh, $100 a month to listen to my rules or something, something like that. You have to create an incentive structure. And the way Twitch works, it's like that, that's not going to happen. Uh, there's just yeah. too, too many opportunities for exploitation and there are no, there's no consequence structures in place. I could stop talking to you and never talk to you again. And I'm not saying I will because I don't want to do that, but no one would really <laughs> re would really think anything of it. It would just be like, okay, yeah, that didn't work out. Yeah. Or, you know, I could say, I could talk a bunch of shit and as long as it didn't uh, erupt into a drama storm, people would be like, oh yeah, this is what he mm. thinks. You know, there's, there's no... Um, consequence structure or incentive structure in place on twitch to generally be a good person or to in fact um with drama it's the exact opposite if mm -hmm. you and i started twitter beef right now i mean that that could be a positive thing man that could be yeah it would drive engagement and then people would pick sides this is what i've said about uh all sorts of drama and controversy is that people don't realize that hey it doesn't matter which side you're on all that matters is you're fighting why because that um, that generates profit or revenue or attention or whatever it might be for the people that are instigating the fights, whether it be the platform, whether yeah. it be some exterior source or whether it be the people involved. Like people think fighting is, is necessarily uh, a non-desired result or drama is a non-desired result. It's like, no, it's the opposite. It might not feel good, but it's exactly what people want. It's WWF. It's professional wrestling. It's um, not fake fighting. It's choreographed. And with all the drama and the smack talking that goes along with it, there might be some reality to that um, rivalry beneath the surface or there they might be friends, but it, it's all um, pageantry. And, uh, you know, people who, you know, ha really think about it understand that mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. other people who just watch it uncritically don't. But yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, you and I could start, if you and I really wanted to drive numbers up, we could start Twitter beef tonight. Um, you know, we could just throw down and have a big argument now and start shit talking each other. And if we were interesting enough in how we had our um, arguments and fights, yeah, it name would attract drop. more we, viewership. We, you know, the, be the best thing to do right now, if, if you wanted to drive engagement, would be figure out some people <laughs> that we have minor controversy with or either one of us. Mm -hmm. And then just say some outlandishly inflammatory things towards them. Just drive that part yep. of the human emotion, which is what a lot of people do. And that's <laughs> that's fine, because I think uh, it's it's fine, is it not? And it's not fine. It's fine in terms of the incentive structure. And it, I think it's not fine in terms of what it's, it's not very good for people in general. Um, well, that's why I'm talking about starting shit with you, because um, I think we both understand the, the situation. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I mean, if you want to start Twitter beef, I'll start posting shit about you tonight for us. <laughs> I don't want it. I've, I've had enough Twitter beef I mean, in I my don't life really either, for, but, um, for many, many lifetimes. Um, but <laughs> uh, anyway, we were we were we were talking about what we would change with Hitless and the Hitless community. But that was a tangent off of Elden Ring for you because we never kind of really finished. Yeah on well a couple of things um one was a lot of things a lot of things and, and i yeah we're coming close to time but one thing that i did want to ask you about and conclude was you said you had a bunch of goals in terms of streaming mm -hmm. um and you just mm -hmm. recently fulfilled them and so i know one was yes. to perform under pressure um, that, that was the biggest one that, that, was that the biggest I accomplished. One. And how did you do that? Well, actually, tell me the other goals first, and then tell me how you accomplished the under pressure. Okay, so um, oh, a lot of the goals are kind of minor ones. First one was um, to get more comfortable with my own voice, because hmm. like many people, this is not a unique thing. I always hated the sound of my own voice. Me too, yeah. Yeah, but you know what? You stream and you watch your stream a little bit, and you get over that shit real quick. Mm -hmm. Real quick that just dried up, at least for me. So um, that was one goal. Another goal was just 
game was to kind of practice social ability. I've never been good at initiating conversations. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I've, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, I feel like I can um, be an interesting conversationalist, but especially group conversations, I'm not very good at. Where you are so just, responsible you know, for basically how the conversation goes. So you keep it running. Especially that, yes. Yeah. Especially that. And that's something, you know, streaming is good for practicing. And a few other minor things, but the real big thing was learning how to perform, how to perform under pressure when people are watching you. Mm -hmm. And you, and you, you me, feel like, like you've accomplished the that. The numbers, yeah, and the numbers n don't matter. It, it can be two people or 2,000. Right. Do doesn't matter. It's all the same to me. It's all absolutely terrifying. Mm -hmm. But I finally accomplish it, and the solution is kind of like this. So, you know, like, Couch Jockey or Gino are just complete cool cucumbers under pressure, right? Well, did you, you, look at did you listen Jockey, to um, the conversation I had with Gino? Uh, actually, yeah, um, I was in his stream earlier and I noticed he had an interview command that led to um, your that led to your podcast with him last week. And um, I had it on in the background and caught part of that. Yeah. So one one of the things he said is that he the one of the exhilarating parts of no hit runs for him are are learning or developing the skill to continuously do well under pressure. So his long <laughs> sessions with Cinder, his long runs, so level one, no, no upgrades, no infusions, uh, no bonfire runs. He, he, the way he described it was they're incredibly high pressure situations. And part of the, the satisfaction he gets is being able to um, uh, operate well under that deep pressure. <clears throat> Which is, you know, that's, that's what Gino said. I, th I thought it was interesting that that yeah yeah you were talking about the same thing it's just a uh, pressure pressure is a big thing with no hit runs oh yeah yeah um so the thing is like you you look at gino you look at couch and they are just cool cucumbers at any time mm -hmm. but then that and that's one approach and that's something i tried for a while but you know what that just ain't me how uh, why not you look at you look at like the happy hob or you look at actually Ots Darva is the perfect example of this. You watch an Ots Darva run, that man is having a continual heart attack. Like he's doing a nine hour run and having a heart attack pretty much constantly. Yeah, he Especially seems pretty stressed. Especially in the last stressed. hour or so. Yeah. He, he is like outwardly panicking the entire time. Right. And I kind of learned this technique where Okay, you know what? I'm not going to try and push it down. I'm not going to try and be calm. I'm going to let myself panic. I am going to outwardly be freaking out. I am going to be, you know, screaming. The thing is, there is a calm in the center of the storm. Right. I learned that if I just outwardly panic. Yeah. And I started and I sort of um, started to get in onto this with um, the the trilogy run I did when I succeeded at that, but then it really took off with Elden Ring where, like I said, um, the, my first any percent was within, um, it was the first actual stream of attempts I had. Mm -hmm. I had practiced things, but this was my first actual stream of uh, attempting the runs and I got it first um, on my first stream, like second run or whatever. So it sounds like- I learned it's to a just panic and like scream and let it out. Yeah. And but like and like outwardly it appears that I'm just flailing, but like <laughs> inwardly I'm completely focused. Okay. And things are just flowing and it, it's the weirdest flow state. Yeah, so it sounds like you you you've learned how to stop denying it or just accept it and embody yeah. it. Just be like, yeah, this is how I'm going mm -hmm. right now. This is what it is and I'm going to embrace it rather than fight against it, waste <laughs> energy there and that um that makes things even worse yeah except with more screaming more screaming okay <laughs> yeah far more screaming so that was the major goal and you've you've accomplished other goals yes yes um but yeah and then um with all remembrances you know i was um getting a pb every stream every mm -hmm. stream i would um get that pb lower and that took like a two or three weeks of attempts to get mm -hmm. like uh, about i think six or so streams was all that was mm -hmm. and so 
I, I feel and like um, a couple weeks ago, I just picked up Resident Evil 2 and, uh, and it, you know, it did a run there and did that one on my second attempt. Mm -hmm. I had spent a couple days, you know, routing and pl practicing things, but second attempt just did it. Pressure oh. didn't bother me. Okay, so I, that... In that VOD, I, um, I don't think I was screaming as much, but I know for the All Remembrances run, there's like... The, a couple people have alerts of me um, uh, screaming at various points in that run. But I got, like, the worst RNG on Renala ever. Okay. And I'm, like, screaming and panicking the entire time, but playing as... But playing as the best I ever have. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, so I, I don't... I actually don't know very much about this run. When Elden Ring came out, I did the blind playthrough, and then I... You know, that was it. I didn't really go into no hit or anything like that. I don't think I even really watched any runs other than the first one mm -hmm. or, or clips of the... of. Seki's or Geno's or something like that. Um, but the the question there would be, um, do you think, like, okay, so you set some goals. You said, I have some deficiencies here, or things I consider deficiencies at least. Um, mm -hmm. I want to fix them, and here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it by streaming, right? And then you did, which is very good. Now, do you mm -hmm. think that you could uh, have developed the skills... Great Godfrey. In another Didst area other witness? than streaming at the same rate you did. Or do you think it would have been Interesting more difficult? Question. So yes. do you think do I think there would have been a better way to go about it? Yeah, like a um, workplace or like public speaking probably, or something like that. Yeah. Probably, but you know what? I'm satisfied with the results. Right. Okay. So that odds that's are, good. odds are Odds are, like, you go with an approach. Odds are you're not going to pick the perfect approach. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just chance because you don't know what you don't know. Right. And you don't know until you try and you learn. And in the process of trying and progressing, you learn. Yes. So, I mean, probably, but I'm satisfied with the results. So, yeah, doing, question, so doing something no is always better than doing nothing. I should have done something else. No, 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 not, not sorry, regret what? at all. Not regret at all. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I think doing something is always better than doing nothing. Um, okay, so the second follow-up question to that would be, is there, during this process with Twitch um, and figuring things out in terms of the things you wanted to work on, were there things mm -hmm. you learned or you developed that you didn't intentionally, that you, you didn't mean to? And... Uh, well, I'll ask the next question after. That's the first question. Did you learn anything additionally to the things, like, to the to the goals you said you wanted to work on? Um, not as far as skills, but as far as understanding, definitely. How so? Like, first of all, as far as the whole, um, streamer space and digital content creator space, mm -hmm. I have vastly more respect for the people who do this professionally. Oh, yeah. For you and the other people who did this as a full-time job. Like the psychological, a deeper, I guess I, I didn't think, I did never think it's easy money. Right. I was never under that illusion, but a deeper respect for the psychological pressures behind it and a recognition that, nah, this ain't me. No, <laughs> this is not something you want to do. No, nah, th this ain't me. I'm not going to be a big um, full-time streamer. Yeah. But um, that really got driven home. And, you know, not just a deeper um, respect and appreciation, but also more specific understanding. Okay, so uh, tell me more about that. What do you mean by that? So what are what, what? is the, the things that are that are like, oh, wow, like I didn't realize that that was a thing and it fucking sucks. I can't think of any big things. It's a lot of small things like. A lot of what you um, talked about in your, um, I think you have it pinned on your Twitter now, actually, about um, why you should um, unfollow me if you mm -hmm. haven't already. <laughs> yeah. I think like for reading that's, that's a long, long read, yeah. <laughs> Which, okay, that, um, that post would have been, I wouldn't have understood a lot of that um, if mm -hmm. I had read it um, five years ago, but... Um, but when you posted it, I read that and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. Because you streamed, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, because I got a small taste of it. 
Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah good. Yeah, Squilla, I was talking to Squilla just, about that. Just a that. little taste and I can extrapolate from there and understand completely what you're talking about there and being like, yep, yep, nothing I disagree with here. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, Squilla was talking to me, like we had a very long conversation the other day, but one thing he was saying is like, um, he thinks that's, that's a really valuable because everybody feels it. They might not admit it or they might not realize it, but it's always there for everybody. It's the nature of the platform and it's the nature oh, yeah. of, of the, the thing we do, which is like, yeah. Okay. So with that, um, do you think that that could ever be a good thing or like, you know how, okay. So I'll give you an example. So like you have a, a, a hammer, a hammer is a tool. You can mm -hmm. use a hammer to, yep. to hit nails or you can use a hammer to break skulls. You know, it could go one way or the other. A gun, yeah. a gun is, is generally used for killing. So it's more on the, like, uh, okay, you know, do I want a hammer or do I want a gun? I, you know, a hammer is more neutral than a gun. Um, a gun can be used good for good and a gun can be used for bad, but generally it's on the side of like, okay, you know, you're going to kill something and you generally don't want to kill things. Um, with that, do you think the concept that we just talked about, the idea of um, the, the pressure, the atmospheric pressure that comes with streaming, do you think that could ever be a good thing or do you think it's just an overall generally bad thing i don't think it's binary okay i think there's good and bad elements mm -hmm. it could be better it could be worse um so if one cares about the health of the online space the question then becomes is one willing to um roll up their sleeves and do something to make it better and if so what and how much effort are you willing to put into that right yeah exactly what are you going to do and will it be effective are you willing to pay the price i guess yeah and for me like i mean as a viewer yeah no um, yeah to I, i'm willing to do things for that <laughs> um as a streamer, nah, man. Um, look, I, I don't know, um, you know what the future holds for me as far as streaming, because like I said, I accomplished all my goals. And if I don't have a goal, I can't be bothered to do something. Oh, that's interesting. So um, if, if I want to continue streaming, I have to figure out a new goal. Right. OK, because I've tried. I've tried variety streaming. It yeah. doesn't work out. I've tried, you know... It doesn't work out in what respect? Things, like, you don't enjoy it? It doesn't go well in terms of com compelling you to stream? Like, how how, how does how exactly does it not work out? Um, I mean, it's most it mostly I, I just fizzle out and lose motivation and don't enjoy it. Yeah, okay. I need to be working on a goal. Like, this has always been the case. This is why I've never done well... I've, I've always done well with self-study and never done well in formal education, mm -hmm. is I need to be out of the theoretical. I need to have a clear goal in mind to um, work on something with the amount of effort that's required to actually be good at it, to actually get any sort of positive results. Okay, that's interesting. Um, and so, you know, with streaming too, like if I if I stream because I feel like I should, yeah. If I'm like a tap, if I like feel like I should because I should maintain an audience or you know I owe it to people or this that and the other thing, it doesn't work. It doesn't the work in terms of your ever worked for me, as far as my motivation and my yep. like willingness to fully engage mm -hmm, with mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. And so my question, and so what I have to sort out now is, what's my new goal? Because well, I've enjoyed streaming and it's kind of helped be an anchor point and there's things I like about it, but that's not enough. Right. I need, if I want to keep streaming, I need to figure out a goal that is me meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. It has to bring you some sort of fulfillment. That's, that's, and, that's, okay. yep. My bigger goals, like the level of goal I'm talking about is not simply doing a run. Mm -hmm. Like, who, who cares um, if I do soul level one, um, no hits, no upgrades and fusions. Okay, going back to Ben Rice, um, like, I, I am emotionally, in, when Ben goes to pick up the heavy thing, I'm emotionally invested. Mm -hmm. But why am I emotionally invested? It doesn't mean, like, how does it affect my life if Ben picks up the heavy thing? If he deadlifts 800 pounds during the um, Twitch Rivals power um, lifting meet, how mm -hmm. does that change my life? Yeah. It matters to me because um, it matters to him. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, there's a and belonging and inspiration component. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. That is 
No, 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 exactly. Thank you. You're actually helping me out there. Yeah, okay. um, but it's, you know, there's an inspirational aspect, but I care because he cares. Mm -hmm. So would you say you know, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I see what, I think I'm seeing what you're getting at. It's very good. It's, it's, a, it's a general good feeling to watch someone do something that they care about. Like that is an, a very yeah, attractive... Some, something they've worked towards, something, a skill they've built up, and it doesn't matter if it's something meaningless. It, the meaning is derived in the process and uh, the striving. I agree with that. And that's so you're saying that's... you need to find something that you can do uh, on Twitch that fulfills those uh, uh, structures. So you need to find something exactly. that you actually want to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I agree with that. And I think that's, that's the problem that the majority of people have because there is an expectation, right? Like, uh, mm -hmm. it's okay, I need to stream every day, six days a week, five days a week, whatever it is, three days a week, it doesn't matter. I okay. just need to stream. And an interesting thing about creative energy, they say you generally, if you, if you go over four hours of creative work a day it's too much like four hours is the absolute limit um hmm. and so if you do that you know day in and day out for a week you're dead like a lot of streamers are just dead they're sapped out there there's nothing oh, yeah. left of them and i also think this is why a lot of them uh defer or resort to things like language very similar language like the, the bro the dude the the like you know imagine are you serious like you you see a lot of colloquial terms amongst streamers and i think it's because they're creatively tapped out and they're creatively tapped out because they are it's humans don't have the capacity to do that and like there's very few mm -hmm. people that can be creative over and over and over again without break and the incentive structures oh, yeah. of and de incentive structures of Twitch don't match up with that. And so what what I think it leads to is the problem that you're having. What I'm what I'm happy about is that you you're like, yeah, I'm not gonna do it. You're like, you're not just like it's I'm gonna stream every day because I have to. You're like, no, I I I need to find something where it allows me to stream. It's a it's what I like to call a happy problem. It's the pitfalls of success. Okay. I, I started streaming with a with goals. Mm -hmm. I achieved those goals. Mm -hmm. The que the question is what's next? Mm -hmm. And a lot of stories ignore this. A lot of stories ignore okay, after, you know, the hero triumphs, then what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, then what do you do when then what? You, yeah. you, you accomplish your goals, then what? Well, you know what the interesting thing What's about next? that is because you can't just sit and be content because that's stagnation and that's death. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. The, the minute you're just satisfied with everything in your life and there's nothing you want to do, that's when you just sit in your fucking rocking chair watching um, uh, Hallmark m Channel movies or whatever, and uh, you get senile and you die. <laughs> you get senile and you die. <laughs> I think that's that's kind of bleak. There, there could, could, could also... Uh, okay, so this is an interesting thing. And, and I'm bleak <laughs> because um, I watched this happen to my mom. I can understand that. Okay, yeah, I, I've watched it happen to people and as well. D dementia is a terrible thing, and part of my coping is just being very blunt and stark with it. But yeah, well, it's a yeah, good coping mechanism. The thing is to have goals and have purpose, and if I want to continue streaming, I have to figure out a goal and a purpose. Well, I also, I, I agree. I agree completely, and I think, I think uh, uh, to, to, to supplement onto that, it's like the hero's journey. Okay, well, you watch mm -hmm. a really good adventure, uh, movie story or whatever with a hero and then what happens after mm -hmm. well one of three things generally either they live happily ever after and then they grow old and that's it and that's the end of their story um or there's a bad sequel which is like and then they went and did this and it makes no sense and it's just you know or there's a good sequel where it's like okay their journey continues um but if we are to just delve into the happily ever after component i think there's something to that because that is something that always bothered me i was like well what now like this this cast of characters or or whatever that i really liked and i really wanted to just continue doing stuff with or experiencing or, or watching or whatever now it's over it's done it's like a tragic feeling but I think there's something to be said, and I'll try and explain this as concisely as possible. But it's like you have chapters in your life. And the reason you have chapters in your life is because once you do something, it's done. And you don't necessarily have to do it again. I mean, you can. There are some people that do. But like, for example, I did Muay Thai for 10, 10 or so years. Okay. That mm -hmm. for me, 
I came to a point where it's like, okay, I'm done. It's not, are you, you're giving up. It's like, there's a difference between giving up and letting go. It's like, okay, this part of my life is over. Time to move to the next part. Um, yeah. And then the same thing with streaming. It's like, okay, look, I streamed for a long time. I did this, I did that. I worked in the this, in this space. I did all sorts of things. And then it's like, oh, now I'm done. Like, you can just kind of feel it. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. It's not that, uh, like, oh, I wish I could have done more or anything like that. And maybe there's that too, but it's more like there's well, a feeling there's always of... there's going to be some regrets, but... Yeah, it's like there's, a, there's something there that's just like you're done. And this is how chapters in your life work generally. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that's how life in general works. If you, if you are doing that with each chapter of your book, event, uh, uh, of your life, eventually you get a book of chapters and then you read the book and you're like, oh, I'm done. I'm done reading the book. I can always revisit it, but it's, it's over. It's done. Okay. And I think that's, that's, uh, that's life and death. You live... Mm -hmm. And you actually live, so you can say, I lived. Now I'm ready to die. You know, I'm ready to move on. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think that is broken up into a lot of smaller components. But if we look at the hero's journey uh, and movies like that, I think that's what that end is, the tragedy that, like, okay, they're going to be gone. But you know what? They're done. You know, it's, it's over. They lived. They're, they're, they're done, and now they can, they, can, they can move towards death or, or die without the clinging to life you know they can be like this mm -hmm. is this is what it is for me now and i'm good with that this is actually the logical next step um so i i think that's something and uh, looking at life like that is it changes my perspective quite a bit because it's like basically for me now it's like you know everybody's gonna die and if we don't then we're gonna have a fuck ton of problems like there's all sorts of vampire movies about it already um <laughs> You know, there's all, there's all sorts of things about exploring what if we didn't die. It's like, well, if we don't, it, the, oh, yeah. the theme is if we don't die, well, we don't live. Um, but the whole idea is like, okay, I'm going to die. Well, I would like to get to death and be like, you know, that was good. Like, good. I lived. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. Good. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a matter of, um, I mean, if everybody lived forever, there's no cycling. There's stagnation because you just have more and more people building up. There needs to be a, a beginning, middle, and ending. A natural order. Because one thing that struck me when you talk about the hero's journey with the happily ever after, what's the difference between the happily ever after where he dies like a day after the mm -hmm. happily ever after and when he, if he dies a thousand years? If he's not doing anything of any note, mm -hmm. if the hero is not doing anything of any note, what's the difference? I th Well, I, if I had to guess, like if, not guess, but if I had to give like an opinion, I'd say contentness. If you're not content, that means there's still stuff that you need to do um, mm -hmm. or still stuff unresolved in your life or, or within you. Um, the contentness comes from everything's okay, you know, whatever. It's like, hey, you know, this is okay. This is good. I'm happy. I'm joyful. I'm whatever. Um, whereas if you're not content and you feel like you're stagnating, then it's like, why? It's like, oh, you still need to grow. You're not done yet. Well, no, no. What I'm saying is that content it's contentment that is the stagnation. Because then you stop moving, you stop striving for things. If you're content, you stop doing anything. You just stagnate and you die. Well, that's the difficult thing because I think... It's a lack of contentment that drives you to do things and have a worthwhile story. Yes, but then once that story is done and it's over, once your life is over and you're content... Mm -hmm. Uh, like I, I agree with you. You you need you need that chip on your shoulder. Like you need that that void. Yeah. Uh, you know to try and f well, that's not a great example. But you you're always seeking something. That's human nature. But then once I think I think that's what life is supposed to be. I think life is supposed to be like a chapter. Like okay, I did it. Let's say I die in one year versus five. Okay, I got lucky. I got an extra five years. You know, I'm content mm -hmm. with that. I have nothing left to do. My kids are good. Or if I have kids or anything, I've done everything I have in the world. I've given, I've done this. I'm happy with things. You know, I can look back and say that was good. I can do more now if I choose to, but I could also sit and do nothing. And it's, it's an equanimity. It's not an, indif it's not an indifference, but it's like, a, you know, however things go now or however things go, I have done my mm -hmm. part. I've said my piece. Um, but I do not think that the contentment was, well, it's difficult because content has a bunch of different definitions. Um, but yeah. I don't think the general, 
I would say apathy, the, the, the negative version of that. Uh, the general apathy is a good thing because then you're um, right. You do you do stagnate. Would you what were you you had you had the sound you made. What was that? No. So you're making a distinction between contentment and apathy, like two sides of a coin. Yeah, because okay. like you can be you can be content with things and still striving. Like it's part of gratitude. It's like God, I'm you know I'm grateful for oh, everything oh, I have okay, and okay. I'm content and I'm joyful and if things go wrong they go wrong I'm still going to strive <laughs> which is different from you know like I just you know I'm not going to do anything why because I'm I'm oh, okay. content quote unquote <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, some of that disagreement was just um, me not understanding exactly, you know, what you meant um, with contentment. And so that that I can get behind. Yeah, that's an interesting thing, too, because that's how a lot of words are. And that's why language can be so powerful. Yeah. Um, kindness, for example, is a very heavily misunderstood term. And <laughs> maybe we can, you know, because oh, yeah. people think kind is being nice. They're like, oh, you, you be kind to another. And it's like, what does that mean? That means, you know, letting them eat ice cream when they're sad. It's like well, you know, is that really kind? Or are you just, are you doing that more for yourself than you are for them? I mean, and I think Ben would define con kindness differently than you. Mm -hmm. But I guess I've never been interested in being nice or kind. Mm -hmm. What I strive for is to be understanding. Like, mm -hmm. if I disagree with you, if I think you're doing something really terrible, I want to understand what you're thinking, why you think that, uh, w what's the motivation. I want to understand why you are doing what you're doing that I hate so much or that I disagree with. I want to understand that. Mm -hmm. Now, if I might understand why somebody did something and still disagree with them and still vehemently oppose them, I like that but word. that actually strengthens my resolve if... um. It, I think if I truly understand where somebody is coming from and I can still disagree with them or oppose them. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, um, understanding also le often leads to empathy. Mm -hmm. And either way, whether it leads to a more solid, whether it leads to empathy or a more solid resolve, what it does is it makes me more effective in dealing with the situation. Okay. Yeah. If, yep. if um, it, it hardens my resolve and I still, you know, think what you're doing is bad or evil or whatever. And you're, um, you're I on the side better of how to counter you. If, if I understand and, you know, gain empathy for you, I, I know how to, I have a better understanding of how to resolve it. So you're on the side of reality, right? You, you work with reality. Yeah. And when, when you work against exactly. reality, you always lose, but yeah, so you, you understand the situation better and therefore you can act better within it. Um, Exactly. And that wasn't a great explanation, but that's why, like I said, I don't care much for nice nicety. I don't care much for kindness. It's understanding I strive for. Well, what do you think? What do you think kindness is? Because I would I would argue that by being understanding, um, you are inherently being more kind in most situations, because with understanding, um, there mm. is a care for the person. Oh, in there what is this? oh the sounds you make is <laughs> <Okay>. funny <laughs> no 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 um i'm thinking through this in real time um so no, no i've come up with this more so understanding can lead to kindness okay if you, like i said oftentimes um if i disagree with somebody but then i seek to understand them and then i gain more empathy then, mm -hmm. so understanding can lead to empathy and kindness mm -hmm. it doesn't always Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sometimes you understand somebody and you get a deeper understanding of exactly what's so wrong. Sure. And like I said, it goes the opposite direction. You really understand somebody and it, it changes to resolve against. Right. So right. That, that's the distinction I make. Understanding often, like the vast majority of the time, understanding leads to some degree of empathy mm -hmm. and kindness, mm -hmm. but not always. No, I, I would agree with that. Sometimes you are, well, so, like it can be curiosity. So you can understand on the basis of curiosity or you can understand something on the basis of how to dismantle it or, or cause it harm. Um, well, I'll just, I'll go with my definition of, of kindness. And I, it's not just okay. my definition, but I think this is a more Please. fundamental de definition that's been lost uh, over time Damn. and well, the bastardization of language. Um, and it would be that I think... Uh, 
when you want the best for another person, and in most cases at little uh, uh, at little gain for yourself, like you're always going to gain something when you want the best for your, for another person. And that overrides what you want for yourself. That's kindness, I think. And mm-hmm. the example would be is like, well, how do you treat a kid? Well, you know, when they do good, you say, Hey, you did good. When they do bad, you say, Hey, you did bad, you know? And why do you do that? Well, because you want to be kind to them because you want mm-hmm. the best for them. So if you're always telling a, a kid, they did good when they did bad, you're setting them up to fail basically you're not you're not you're not helping them be in line with reality you're doing the opposite in mm-hmm. fact you're creating a, a, a pseudo reality that serves you better than it serves them because then you don't have to go through the trouble or be the bad guy in in saying something they they might not like so yeah for a lot of people and this is what a lot of people don't understand being kind it can mean if someone's doing something shitty like if you're you're you know a 45 year old infant and you're throwing a tantrum <laughs> it can be like hey man like get your shit together like that can be a kindness um whereas mm-hmm. the neutral would just be like oh yeah avoid that guy walk away you know and it would not be like, oh, are you okay? Let me help you out. Let me figure you out. Like, oh, are you feeling okay? Like, it wouldn't be coddling. A lot of people um, see coddling as kindness. And that's that's one of the, the most common problems I have nowadays with the with the word. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I do think I I do think um, anyone who seeks to understand things and also seeks to to do so in the benefit of themselves and the benefit of others overall, I think there is some kindness there, which is the distinction I was trying to make. When you look at something and you're, you, I think you as a person, and this is, well, one of the reasons I'm talking to you is because Ben Rice spoke very highly of you all throughout the the years. I'm very bad with time. Lily Charles did as well. A bunch of people did. Um, I would see you as more of a kind person um, compared to not. I, I reject that title. You reject it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I reject being kind. Like I said, I have, um, I mean, I guess because it, I disagree with your definition of kindness. Okay. What you're describing as kindness, I would call altruism. Altruism, you know, really? Being willing being willing to roll up your sleeves and do the work and sacrifice of yourself for the benefit of others. I would call that altruism. Okay. Kindness is more just in the nurturing, um, gentle way. There's kind, which is opposed by tough love. There's tough kindness, love. the the nurturing, and then there's the sort of, you know, tough love, the push of, hey, I, I'm calling you out on this, not because I hate you, but because I want you to be better. Yeah, yeah that's that's a kindness in my eyes, but I can I can understand how we can. But yeah, and yeah. we're arguing semantics yeah, at yeah, this yeah. point on that. But no, so that's why I reject the title of kind. OK, well, you, that is I, I that like is to perfectly be understandable. Mm hmm. <laughs> Like I said, I strive to be understanding, but kindness as an absolute, I reject. Would you say, like, would you, would you embrace altruistic? Yes. You Okay. Okay. <laughs> good. All right. Good. Well, uh, okay. I, I, I guess I would to some extent strive to be that whether I am or not, I'm not that's I'm fair. biased and not um, qualified to assert. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's very difficult to call, other call people yourself make that something. judgment. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I understand that it's putting you in a, in a <laughs> Hey, back flippy is, are you altruistic? You know, I, I get it. Okay. I, I'm the fucking best shit ever, man. <laughs> yeah. You ain't never seen somebody as altruistic as me, motherfucker. Okay. So and, then or, nor is humble. Here, yeah, nor is, I say that all the time, actually. I like that. Um, I don't think I'm a very humble person, but I like saying that because it's, it's contradictory just and in its nature. Um, some humility is good, but um, you, you don't want too much of it. There's a balance there. Well, yeah, exactly. And I think nowadays, ah, it's tough. You know, this is, this is a whole other conversation we could have. Um, but we are, we're, running, we're running low. Like, we've, we've gone over time. It's gone pretty fast. Why don't we, why don't we we'll finish with, um, with three things, Okay. So mm-hmm. I'll, I'll figure out a question I, I would have for you. I'll ask you that. You can give me an okay. answer. Uh, if you have any questions for me, you can ask me now. Um, and then I'll okay. let chat during the, the duration while we're answering and, and, and asking these questions, chat can ask a question or a bunch of questions. And then you can, you or I can, can figure them out or answer them. And then we'll call it there. And then um, uh, we can go from there. How's that sound? That sounds great. Um, 
I my only concern with that is um I'm running low on energy. I don't know if I if I can come up with a meaningful question that's for you fine. right now. No, 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 that's, that's, yours, that's and okay. I will try. Okay. But no, 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 no. honestly, I can react now, but like initiating things at this time it's tough. right now. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll, I'll just put <laughs> it like nothing's for off limits. everybody here who doesn't know, I've been up for 23 hours now. Come true. 23 hours. Ooh, so, yeah, you're you're on the loopy the loopy side of the the yep. awake the awake spectrum. Okay, so then but my I think it's done well because um the greatest comp you've paid me a great compliment um uh, tonight and you know do you know what that is? I I have no idea. You haven't gotten very far in the game. <laughs> it's there pretty have been far. A ton of times, it's pretty like, far. You like you were like <laughs> like you decided that you were gonna play some Elden Ring because I wasn't on face cam. Yeah. And because you know, in case you know things don't go as smoothly, um, you, you still got the game um to occupy your attention and entertain the stream. But there have been so many times where you've just been sitting in place where right now you're just jumping like you killed God um Godric ten minutes ago and you're just hopping around swinging your sword yeah. and doing shit in this game. Yeah. And I take that as a compliment that I have engaged you enough to where um this conversation's been interesting enough you haven't gotten far in the game why well, I, I need to be engaged like that's 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 the whole idea is if you yeah. are a person and you are a person and you're actually showing me yourself which you are which is good thank you for that then i need to actually pay attention to what you're saying and and where yeah. you're trained yeah all of that stuff um is very important yeah, and, and it's on me to do that and, I, and so I take I, it as a compliment that I've succeeded. Yeah, it's very difficult for me to actually play games, uh, especially ones that I haven't played a lot, when that is going on. This is why I didn't choose like Smash or something like that. I chose Elden Ring because it's it's mostly autopilot. Like I don't remember a lot of the bosses oh, and yeah. stuff like that, but it's mostly autopilot. But no, that that's good. Okay, so then my question for you would be: What's up? Do you have, like you said, you said um, that in order to continue with Twitch? You need to find mm -hmm. something meaningful, some sort of goal you can set for yourself. And obviously you mm -hmm. haven't quite figured that out, but do you have like a scent? Do you have something where you're like, okay, it's probably in that direction. It's not variety streaming. You know that. Um, it might. Um, yeah, go ahead. Not really. Mm -hmm. I've gotten a couple insights and I've actually been taking some notes as we talk um of some ideas i'm very much like if somebody says something to me it's in one ear out the other but if i see it written down mm. it, i retain it much better and so i've been taking a couple notes and uh, got some ideas to ponder but generally no it's a big uncertainty big uncertainty um, and like i said it has to be a bigger goal than play the video game well yes <laughs> that's a, that's a that's like, a tough one play the video game well is is the medium it's the means not the end mm -hmm. the end has to be something better than play the video game well and it can't be get people to like me because ju just from like my experiences growing up mm -hmm. um i have learned to to an unhealthy degree um and this is kind of contradictory to the whole thing I said about pressure earlier, but mm -hmm. to a large extent, I've learned to, to an unhealthy degree, ignore um, the opinions of others. And okay, yeah. To some extent, that's a healthy thing, but like too much of that is actually pretty bad. Well, you want balance, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes people's opinions of you are valid and you should really, if you want to live in society, really take those into account. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I have problems not just outright dismissing them because uh, screw you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny the way you said that. No, I get that. So I, I guess because I, I do to an extent want to figure this out because Twitch has added value to my life. I enjoy streaming, mm -hmm. but in order for me to enjoy it, there needs to be a bigger goal and I need to figure out what that is. Yes. It has to go beyond Twitch. Mm -hmm. good okay that's a good answer i like that answer um i under see, i always have so many questions like every every time someone says something i have a million questions like uh we'll go one step further here and say okay well i understand that i i, I think that's good like yes you want to take the criticism of the people that care about you seriously 
um, because mm-hmm. they do care about you and they're generally acting from a good place. And of course, people have flaws of their own that might taint their advice, but you do also want to foster a relationship of trust with those people. And, um, you know, it's like you do need to function in society and stuff like that. So then the question would be, well, what happens then when, there, when a, a society takes on more pathological elements? It doesn't become pathological itself, but uh, like an, a good example would be political correct, correctness. You're, you're expected in some circles or areas just, just to not say certain things, whether they're true or not. Um, mm-hmm. What what would you think about that as as a whole in general? This is breaching a very large topic. Yeah. That, okay. Um, we could we could leave that for later. We should have a full podcast on this, but I'll, I'll, I, I'm not going to leave you with a non-answer. Mm-hmm. Um, I I tend to be so. Th- there's two competing things here. On the one hand, um, I tend to be somewhat of a free speech extremist. Okay. Like against. almost all forms of censorship Mm -hmm. on the other hand i can see as i grow older i can and have matured i can see the importance of manners and decorum in society Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have you know set rules of how we engage with each other Mm -hmm. and how we interact um and we don't cross the line like just to tell the truth Mm-hmm. Like I- I'm just being honest, but you're fucking ugly, bro. Yeah, Did you well. know that? Like, there's no value in that. Um, I think yeah, that, saying, I think there's I lack think of truth in that. Or something. Um, everything you speak must pass through three gates. Okay. Is it true? Is it necessary? And is it kind? Those uh, are the three the, gates. The kind thing. Anything and... you say must pass through. Is it true? Is it necessary? And is it kind? So give me the give me the now kindness me, definition quick again, just just so I can really understand that. I, I guess um, in relation to this, it's vague, but it does kind of conform more to um, my um, definition where it's more, um, you know, loving and nurturing. Loving and nurturing. Okay, so is it generative? Now, you could say that. These three, now, with these three um, requirements, I think only two out of the three are necessary. If you've got any tr- two out of the three, um, I consider myself good to go. So if it is... Uh, true and it is necessary if it if it's necessary to say and it's true say it like even if it's not kind right if it's only true if it's true but it's not necessary or kind then keep it to yourself right at the same token if it is um true and it is kind just say it it's not necessary okay even fair if enough. it's not necessary just say it mm-hmm. if it's kind if it's something kind and it's true say it Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But if it's just kind, but it's not true, that that's a false compliment, and false compliments have a hollowing effect on our social interactions. I would agree with that. Yes, uh, there is a there's a thought I had about. Um, oh God, I heard someone say this. Um, oh fuck, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. I'm gonna die here, but let me just get it real quick. This is something I I, I heard and I agreed with because I see it everywhere. Um. It has to do with shining. I th- where did I write this down? Pressure, intelligence. Uh, paper. I can't figure out where I wrote it down. I wrote it down somewhere around here. It was from Community. I don't. I don't know if you watched that show, but I really like that show. No. Uh, you haven't watched that show? I don't watch much shows. Oh, I've okay. I've never been. I've never been in. I've never been a fan of passive entertainment. Yeah. Um, For me, my two forms of entertainment are video games and um, uh, books. You like active something things. which actively engages me. Something that just where I just sit there and watch. Mm-hmm. And I understand there's like visual literacy and um, active watching. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm not trying to like be hoity toity or anything about this, but for me personally, I don't watch much of anything. So if you ask me, have I watched this show? No. 
Fair enough. The okay. answer is almost always, <laughs> always no, and especially no. more recent things because my preferences have only hardened with age. With, so. with age, hey, there's there's some things that I think if you I can get some show, value out of. You should of. watch this show. Like, no, 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 I don't care. Too. <laughs> okay, all right, fair enough. If you ever decide <laughs> but, to watch a show, you let me know. I'll give you some good shows. But the quote was, I found it. Forcing, sing, for, okay. forcing things to be bright makes the darkest darkness underneath even darker. And I was like, oh, like, I don't, yeah. you know, that was said to be, it was in a situation that was more joking, but I agree with that. If you're overly yeah. positive and you're just continuously, it's like, yeah, then things just get worse, worse, worse underneath. And here's the thing. If you need to compliment somebody, if it's important that you compliment somebody, take the effort to find something sincere and true to compliment them on. I would agree with that. Yes, take the effort to actually find something um, that is because, worthy of a compliment. You know what? Everybody has something that's worthy of praise. Mm -hmm. Like, so if you want to praise them, if you need to praise them, find something that's true. Mm -hmm. Look for it. Make the effort. Don't just go the, mm -hmm. the easy, acceptable way out. Okay. Uh, did you and, see... Um, somebody asked um, it, what necessary means in this context, and the best example I can actually give is this. So the third example of this is if, if something is necessary to say and it's kind, it doesn't have to be true. Okay, give me, give me a, one of a them hard all. example of that. Um, so... I don't want to go into too many details with this, but yep. um, talking a friend through a suicide crisis. Mm -hmm. and I've so, experienced this before, and you know what? I said what was necessary. I said kind things that were necessary to say. Many of them were not true. Many of them it were not true. Mattered. Okay, okay, but it did matter. It, it did that, make a that difference. That can be sorted out later, but in that moment, it was necessary to say them, and it was kind. Right. So it was focused on the long term. It was focused on the long. It was still in service mm -hmm. of 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 the situation. Oh, wait, I understand about that. Well, yeah. One. Yeah. That that that's an easy example there. So I guess that's the example I would give to. Um, I think that was Balloon. Um, who asked about um, yeah, Balloon Matrix? What defines necessary? That's the best kind of example I could give of what defines necessary. That's a rather stark example, but I guess. I would, um, yeah. There you go. Give that as the best explanation I can give right now on that. Okay. Let me just see if there's any questions here, because I I'm I'm gonna open okay. chat again, and you've had it open this whole time, but I can't I cannot focus if I have chat open. <laughs> um, this is too much going on. You know, it it. it oh. oh, I understand completely. It's over simulation, and you know you have to find what you're comfortable with dividing your focus and. Like, I have so much admiration for somebody like um, Lily Charles, who is holding six different um, conversation threads at the same time while playing uh, the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, she's... Uh... Like, that, that is a skill I do not have and probably will never have, but I greatly admire. The multitasking ability. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's good too. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I don't think there's too many questions or anything like that but so uh, we've been going for more than two hours we've been going for about two hours and 30 30 or 40 minutes so longer than we usually do um but i i will say it was i enjoyed the conversation it was good um thank you for coming and staying up late oh, it's been great man to thank do you it so much for inviting me yeah of course if you want to do it again you just let me know and we can we can figure out another time to talk about different things um but yeah, I appreciate it, for Flippy. Oz, it's You've your been... world. You, it, it's your world for us. I'm just living in it, man. Um, you know, you set out the invite. Yeah. And um, we'll make it happen. Sure. Uh, then maybe in in a month or or two, we'll cycle we'll cycle through or something like that. Um, right Heck now, yeah, I'm man. trying I'm to looking do forward to it once a week. But yeah, you've always been great. People always talk very highly of you. Um, I've always thought thought well of you. I haven't talked talk to you before i'm not a very social person you know um mm -hmm. but well, i you i think you're social in certain ways but you're so? not like outgoing like determined to i mean it goes back to that whole analogy you're the fighter you like one thing that um several people have said about you is um if you see something in chat that you want to address that you have thoughts on you're going to say it and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter the consequences it's um it, you know for me it's 
you know, there's certain topics I won't broach in um, Twitch chat. I'll be like, ask me about that in Discord or mm-hmm. something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Whereas it, you're very um, direct. If you see something you want to address, um, you would consider it a moral failing to not address it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. you have a lot of social intelligence in how you um, formulate arguments and discussion. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Which is part of what excited me about doing this. Yeah, is the um, is the, is the talking? I think I've always, I think I've always found you. Okay, most people would take this as an insult, but I'm saying it to you as a compliment. Okay. I have always found you a challenging person to interact with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> I, it's nuts, and like most people would take that as might hear that as an insult, but I think you understand that as a compliment. Well, it, it's true. It's true because it's even. Like, even if you're, if you are an acquaintance with me, if you're a friend with me, it's harder to be a friend with me than an acquaintance. If you're in a relationship with me, if you're my girlfriend, whatever, it is even harder because I, I hold people to a very high standard and I do it for a reason. Um, mm-hmm. But I also, I, I also see th- a lot of things. I see a lot of things all the time. I'm always kind of observing and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I understand like it is, it is difficult to be around me because you know, the, the standards, the bar is higher in, in a lot of cases, which yeah. may or may not be a good thing. I don't know. But no, I appreciate that, man. I, I think it's a good thing. Like I said, um, a lot of people might hear it another way, but between me and you, I think we understand that as a compliment. Yeah, no, I totally do. I appreciate that, man. That's, that's, that's it's a great good challenge. Yeah. Um, and that's why I was excited. And that's why when you invited me, I was excited to do it. You know what? Well, the next time, maybe we can we can maybe talk about some stuff that uh, we might disagree on, or um, some more engaging subjects where we can we can go back and forth on on these things. If you would like, of course. Uh, there's obviously oh, a lot of other stuff I want to figure out about you and stuff like that. Um, but it it could go either way. Either way, I'm looking forward to it. Hell yeah, man! And um, my DMs are open on um, Discord to you, like. Sure. Okay. Well, yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks for staying up f- with me. Um, I think we'll end it here. Okay. Um, man. That was that was good. And real quick, I want to say thank you to everybody who's been hanging out in chat. Yeah. Thanks, guys. It's been. <laughs> I, I, I I appreciate. I'm honored that you guys think we're worthy of your attention. Thank it, you so much, everybody. I don't usually. Stream.